Our thanks go to sponsors and partners, without whom this event would not be possible. Funding partner, Sport England. Official partner, TIA. Endorsed product, Sport Systems. Host City, marketing Sheffield and Sheffield International venues. Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to Sheffield and more specifically to Ponds Forge. We are here in this famous venue in the north of England for the Swim England National Winter Championships 2018. Plenty of the country's best swimmers have made their way to Sheffield en masse to uh, compete here in a real start of season showcase ahead of what's going to be a really, really interesting 2019. The swimmers all warming up ahead of what should be a fantastic evening session here live on BBC Sport. A very good evening to you. My name is Stephen James, alongside three-time Olympian James Goddard. James, first of all, pleasure to have you with us. Thank of you course, for me. we watched the morning session. We saw some fantastic heat. How much are we looking forward to 
well, we're hoping to be a fantastic evening session. Yeah, I was really surprised with the heats this morning. Some serious, serious competition. Um, I expected it to be slow, to be sluggish. You know, people in really heavy training at the minute. But people were smashing it. There was British junior records. Um, the uh, the seniors were really competing against each other. You know, some, some really close, tough races. So the finals tonight should be really on fire. Yeah, we're certainly hoping so. And this event is usually a bit of a blow off the cobwebs before Christmas sort of do for the swimmers. It's, it's quite an interesting one. They're still in very, very heavy training. And just describe to me as a former swimmer how difficult that is to perform your best whilst you're still in the midst of essentially pre-season. Yeah, it's pretty difficult. I mean, you, you, you're lifting heavy weights, you're doing loads and loads of meters in the pool. Um, so to come here and race, I mean, it's quite enjoyable, be enjoyable because it's short course, which we're not really used to. We used to be racing in long course pool. So it's, the guys can get in and I've heard a few of the swimmers recently say it's a bit of fun. They're getting in, they're having fun, they're enjoying it, you can see some smiles on faces and happy swimmers make fast swimmers and we've seen that this morning uh, in the in the heats. Yeah we really have. Some of the highlights from this morning in particular the uh, the age record you mentioned from young Cameron Williams. We saw him do this in the summer. A couple of British age records falling from him but considering he was racing behind a European silver medalist in the breaststroke James Wilby who's had a great break breakthrough year finished third behind him turned in first position this is a 14 year old yeah and it's again i mean i, I was really shocked with the heats again it's the, the juniors that really really stepped up and i was hoping they would do that because i got a great chance to race some top top quality swimmers we've, you know we've got olympic medalists here commonwealth medalists european medalists and we've got a great team from canada here you know so we've got some international uh, uh, swimmers as well so the juniors really really stepping up and and, and showing that they can that they can compete with some of the great swimmers in the world. Yeah, they really are. We're blessed at the moment in Britain to boast some of the very best swimmers around. Plenty of them are here as well. We've got James Guy coming up later on, Siobhan Marie O'Connor as well, Molly Renshaw is in there, Holly Hibbert still to come, Max Litchfield is racing, James Wilby too. So some of the swimmers who've performed so well this year in 2018 for British swimming in general has, has really been a, a, an interesting year because we had the Commonwealth Games and then the European Championships. So in a championship sense, not a huge year, but it's been a very successful one because the performances at these two have been exceptional. Yeah, I know it's been great with the timing of the Commonwealth Games and the Europeans this year because usually you can't do the two because it's July, August time, but we had the Commonwealth Games earlier this year, obviously, in, in Australia, which meant that the guys could go to the Europeans in Glasgow in August uh, and compete at both. And they've been really successful this year. It's been fantastic. I mean, we just look at the Commonwealth Games, we, you know, we were smashing it, gold medals all over the place. Europeans, we did really well. We had some great juniors step up in the, at the European Championships in Glasgow, um, especially in the relays. Uh, the girls did fantastic, you know, winning that gold in 4 by 2 um, was absolutely fantastic. Uh, so we've had a great year. Um, two more years to the Olympics. I know they've got that on the mind. But this, this meet here is, I guess, is a kind of a stepping stone. I don't really like to use that term too much, but uh, for the World Championships next year, um, and I think coming here for me, it was it's about racing hard, racing fast, but getting that confidence um, to go into the training because the next two months of training are going to be really, really difficult. January, February is winter, it's cold, but you've got to put loads of meters in the pool, you've got to work your backside off in the gym um, to get yourself ready for the trials which will be coming in, in April. Yeah, plenty to come in 2019. It is a world championship year, of course, and then before we know it, we're all packed off to Tokyo for, a, for another Olympics. It, it never stops in the swimming calendar, as those fans of the sport will know. We're going to take a little look at what we've got to come this evening in terms of the schedule, and we really aren't overselling this. We've got some fantastic races to come. We open with the fastest heat of the women's 800 meter freestyle. Holly Hibbert is one to watch in that one. She goes in as the big favorite, had a fantastic year as Holly. Men's 53 will then be, we're hoping, a pretty much a shootout. You mentioned the Canadians uh, here, James. We've got Yuri Casile, who looked fantastic in the heat earlier on. He's gonna go up against one of the best youngsters in the country in Tom Fannin. And then a 100 meter breaststroke final between Kira Smith of Canada, Siobhan Marie O'Connor, Katie Matz, and Molly Renshaw. I mean, that is, that's a world-class 100 meter breaststroke yeah, final. Yeah, that 100 meter breaststroke is probably going to be the most stacked event of the weekend, uh, let alone tonight. I mean, I think the being from the uh, fastest to the sixth fastest, the top six, 0.7 of a second separating the first six swimmers. That's just crazy. There's so much insane. quality in those ranks as well. I mean, yeah. those four there are, are yeah. international medalists. Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's British champions there, Commonwealth champions, the European medalists, so like, you know, it's just stacked, it's really stacked, and it could be anyone's race. I mean, Siobhan, we thought, would have it her own way. She hasn't, um, which makes for a great race. I mean, I think we've got uh, Sarah Basie in lane two, is it? Yeah. You know, she's Commonwealth gold medalist in the 50 meter breaststroke earlier this year. That's how stacked this 100 meter breaststroke is. So that's going to be a very, very exciting race.
Yeah, we've got the men's 200 back following that. Luke Greenbank is the one to watch in that one. Women's 200 IM, similar story to the women's 100 breaststroke. Kayla Sanchez from Canada led the way ahead of the Olympic silver medalist Yvonne Marie O'Connor. I mean, that's a battle for the ages we're hoping coming up this evening. Don't count out Abby Wood from Loughborough in that one either. We'll see James Guy then in action in the 100 fly. Him and Joe Litchfield will take each other on in that one. Women's 50 back has Emily Crane and Chloe Golding duking it out in lanes four and five. James Wilby, Lawrence Palmer and David Murphy are going in the men's 50 metre breaststroke. Then fly through into the women's 200 fly. Laura Stevens and Emily Large look fantastic this morning. Men's 400 free sees Max Litchfield, Jay Elliott and Toby Robinson go. And then as we see here, women's 100 freestyle again in another stacked field. Kayla Sanchez who looked amazing. Marie Wattle from... Uh, from Loughborough, Anna Hopkin, Georgia coach of Omri O'Connor. There's five swimmers there. Each of them could win that quite easily. We close out with the men's 100 meter individual medley, a short course exclusive, and two relays as well. So as you, as you can sort of garner there, ladies and gents, some incredible races to come. And let's touch a little bit on this, uh, on this 100 meter breaststroke that we were talking about. Kira Smith, from Omri O'Connor, Katie Matz and Molly Renshaw, yep. elite international swimmers. Yep. And She's been on the on the national scene for a long time, and everyone knows how good she is. And she did pit Molly Renshaw to the post in that one. Yeah, she's um, she swims out of Stockport Metro, my old swimming club. So big up Stockport. But um, I know Katie a little bit, and she hates to lose. I mean, it sounds kind of obvious when you talk about competitors. Like obviously they hate to lose, but I know Katie hates to lose. So and it's, it's a great race for her. She's in a mix with some top top quality breaststrokers. She can really push herself to, uh, to to compete against you know some of the world's best. And um, moving on to the guys as well, one particular guy, James, he's uh, yep. he's going in the 100 fly against Joe Litchfield. Now, a little story you were telling me before as we see our officials making their way out onto, onto poolside here. These two have, have met before in a rather strange competition that you were at. Yes. Yes, I was at, a, I was at an open meet recently and there was an event called the Skins event. And what, basically what happens is there's four balls in a bag. Each ball is a different colour and each colour represents a stroke. So before they... The eight, le the eight boys la la line up for a 50 metre sprint. A ball gets pulled out, say it's blue, and blue equals backstroke, then they've got to do 50 metres of that stroke. Anyway, it got down, and if you come last, you are You're knocked out. out. You get knocked out. It's a knockout competition. Anyway, it got whittled down. James Guy, Joel Litchfield, in the last two, backstroke gets pulled out. Okay, the ball for backstroke gets pulled out. Joel Litchfield, James Guy, head to head, smash it out. Joel Litchfield wins by 0.1 of a second. And there's a little bit of prize money in there as well, but you could see that. Could see how much it meant to James Guy. He was he was absolutely devastated. Um, so maybe this is this is a great chance for James to get a bit of revenge. Yeah, those two are really enjoying that one, and we're looking forward to seeing both of them go a little bit later on. One we haven't really touched on is this women's 200 meter fly between Laura Stevens and Emily Large, two of the up and comers. I think it's fair to say on the national scene. We saw actually this time last year Laura Stevens absolutely smash this event, and Emily Large was the developing athlete for British Swimming a couple of years ago. She's been well known at this sort of level for a little while is now the time for these two to make a big step up because they were so good this morning yeah for sure I mean it's yeah I mean the time is now and you know they're young they're still teenagers but I mean in the world of swimming that's not that young anymore especially with the women I mean I think with women it's they peak even maybe a little bit younger than the guys so yeah I mean I mean they're both swimming great both swimming fantastic they're both swimming fast and at this time of the year that's that's that can only mean great things I'm hoping they go to the trials next year, smash it there. Uh, let's, let's watch tonight, let's see if these two ladies can really push themselves in the tuna fly. And it's great to have that little bit of a head to head, you know, because when you've got that little bit of competition, especially in a tuna meter event, I think that pushes you a little bit extra to do special things. For sure, and uh, one event coming up towards the end of the night is a short course exclusive, the 100 meters individual medley, a race that I know you personally like to swim, and I don't want to you know, inflate your ego too much, but still hold the British record do, for. Yep, so, uh, yep. You'll be keeping one eye, well, both eyes very much on that one, I'm yeah. guessing. Nobody's beating that tonight. No, no. I mean, <laughs> I, well, I, mean I, I, think, I think it's Joel Litchfield who's going to win this. I mean, he's, got, he's really strong in all the four strokes. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, he's the one to beat for sure. I don't think my going to go tonight. I mean, I was shaved, tapered and everything for that race. Uh, these boys, like we say, they'll quite do it. But you never know, so let's see. Well, as you can see behind us, the, the lights are on here in the pool and we're introducing our very first race this is the 800 meter freestyle the fastest heat making her way out at the moment now is emily clark of loughborough always so well represented at national level 
Nova Centurion's Freya Colbert, who's been here a little while, seems to be enjoying the festivities down on full side as well. That's Leah Christ of the City of Leeds. Okay, Glenster from the City of Leicester, Leicester Shark Swimming Club. She's uh, been very impressive at age group level over this sort of distance. Very dangerous swimmer. Now, Polly Holden goes in lane five. This is the swimmer to watch in this one. Holly Hibbert makes her way out for Stockport Metro. Very, very talented swimmer. Had another brilliant year. 400 meter bronze at the European Championships. A bronze, a silver rather, at the Commonwealth Games in the 400 and fourth in the 800. I know she's starting to specialize towards the four, but to get a fourth in an 800 is never nice. No, yeah, she's, um, she's a tough competitor, Holly. Um, she does not like to lose either. Um, I wouldn't want to mess with Holly. She's a big, strong, powerful girl. She's the defending champion in this race, and we're almost ready to go for our first race tonight. It's the fastest heat of the women's 800 meters freestyle. Here we go. It's time to hand over to our commentator, Jonathan Bell. Thanks for that, Steve. So indeed, this is the fourth of the heats that have uh, taken place today in the women's 800 meter freestyle and the uh, three earlier on in the morning heats. But this the uh, fastest of them. And we're underway with eyes, of course, on lane four and Stockport Metro's Holly Hibbert, who we've mentioned, who uh, this year has got the best British short course time in this event of the year. It's uh, a season's best of 8.22.58, which is a bit behind her PB, standing at 8.19.19, but significantly ahead of those that are around her in the pool. And uh, already Holly Hibbert trying to uh, take charge in this one and uh, a couple around her as well. Not too far off the tail end on the near side, lane one, that is Emily Clark of Loughborough University who has got that open lane currently to her right-hand side. No uh, lane zero swimmer in this. And uh, her up alongside Nova Centurion's Polly Holden in lane five up there as well. And Polly Holden coming into this event after a good summer at the British Swimming Summer Championships here in Ponce Forge where she managed to get gold in the senior category but of course the great thing about the winter meet as I have James now joining alongside me is the fact that we do get some of those swimmers who are competing internationally in the summer here in the winter to, to go against the likes of Polly Holden who didn't quite make the cut for the international team However, it's a good test for her against the likes of Holly Hibbert tonight. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a great test, you know, to put, put herself up against Holly Hibbert. Um, I mentioned it a few times already today, but it's a great confidence booster if you can come here at a short course meet and push yourself against some of the best. It really kind of sets you up over Christmas, over that new year for the next two months to get it back into training and really hit it hard, ready for those trials next year in April for the World Championships. I think for me, uh, Holly Hibbert is the one to beat tonight. You can see she's gone out strong, looking really smooth and comfortable. What is the motive, James, for someone like Holly Hibbert? Of course, has had a great year and, and winding down now into the winter. What is the motive when you come to an event like this? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure she's winding down too much. I mean, it, I mean, this is a really important part of the season. You know, over the winter, it's it's where the the meet is adorned. It's where you hit the gym really hard. You know, it's where all that grind is, you know, and not a lot of people know about this this time of the year because it's, you're behind closed doors, you know, swimming loads and loads of metres. It's a horrible time, really, in terms of, you know, you've got to get up early in the dark when it's cold. And, um, you know, for someone like Holly, it's a, a competition that she's going to come to. She's going to race hard. She, I mean, she's specialising more for the 400 now as well. So she doesn't really do many 800s, um, especially long course. But here, she'll just want to come, she'll want to race hard. It'll almost be like a training swim, she'll want to race hard, win the event. I mean, that'll be the first thing on Holly's mind. I know that for a fact, because she's a, a tough, tough competitor. She does not like to lose. Um, so that'll be t uh, Holly's targets and aims for this meet. Well, we're past the uh, quarter stage of this one now, and it certainly is a case of Holly Hibbert leading out from the front with uh, Polly Holden just being towed behind her in the lane to her right-hand side. And Holly Holden certainly giving it a good account of herself so far in this race as we see the rest of the pool they're pretty tight with one another aren't they but that front two really are separating themselves now from uh, them and the rest of the pack yeah it's a good swim from polly so far she's just hanging on to holly's feet 
Um, it's not. It's not easy. I mean, I'm, I'm not a distance free star swimmer, so I, I'm not 100% sure. But you know, it's it. It must be tough because I, I I always used to like to lead at the front of the pack in my race. I used to like to lead from the start. So you know, Polly's kind of just hanging on to Holly's feet there. Maybe that's the way she likes to swim, and then maybe she'll try and build on this 800 and down the last 200 meters. She'll st start to try and hopefully reel Holly in. Whether she can do that, we'll soon find out. Because Holly's got a great back end in her 800 freestyle as well. Worth mentioning as well, of course, this is a heat, and uh, well, we've got a, a real mix of age categories. Quite a few of our senior swimmers in there. The likes of Emily Clark in one, Alice Deer and Holly Hibbert. And Polly Holden, as we've mentioned, not forgetting Grace Kinnell as well in lane eight. But there are swimmers in there that have turned just 14 years old this year. The likes of Freya Colbert in lane seven and Millie Balding in lane nine. And a real incentive for them as well to pit their wits against some of the seniors and see how far they can push themselves. Yeah, and why not? You know, it's, um, it seems like to me that swimming is getting younger and younger all the time. Especially the ladies seem to be peaking. Um, you know, really young, young. You know, one of my good friends, Becky Adlington, uh, who we all know, won two golds in Beijing, 2008, the 408. She was 19 years old, 19 years old, and that, that was her peak. She never went faster than that. You know, she won more medals after it. You know, she won the Commonwealth Games, the Worlds, the Europeans, all that sort of stuff. But in terms of time and speed, that was the fastest she ever went. So now is the time for these youngsters to start pushing on, pushing through. Very Colbert in lane seven is uh, certainly one of them. It's a lot of support from the uh, Midlands faithful in green on the far side there, the colour of the pocket rocket, of course with a teammate in this time final in uh, Polly Holden in lane five. Yeah, we've got the two Nova Centurion swimmers. Where was Re Rebecca Adlington from? Nova Centurion. So, the, you know, they're breeding some great distance freestylers over there. They've got something going on over there the, in terms of the training, the setup that's making some fantastic distance swimmers. And it's worth saying as well, for this event and all the events we have tonight, there will be junior medals and senior medals given out. So it's not necessarily those that touch in at the wall first that will be claiming the medals tonight. And uh, we will have our commemorative medals as well, guests coming from the likes of Ireland and Canada. There's quite a strong Canadian contingent, actually, that will be swimming over the weekend. And we see them in the Swim England meets, whether it be in the summer or the winter. And uh, some real talent on their books as well which again is another reason for our English swimmers to test themselves at the end of another gruelling year. But Holly Hibbert, well she started as she means to go on and that gap now just getting bigger and bigger between her and Polly Holden. And herself is uh, five seconds behind there, 5.08 the split between the two. But this looks like strong stuff from Holly Hibbert. As we mentioned, her fastest swim of the year was 8.22. 5.8, she swam that last month in Stockport and we're just wondering here if we can just chop a few seconds off of that she's certainly ticking towards that sort of time yeah I was kind of, you know, maybe kind of wishing that Polly would uh, would reel her in down the last 200 metres um, but I think in my, in my heart and in my mind I knew that uh, Polly Hibbert was going to be too strong very experienced swimmer now, even though she's still pretty young, but she's a uh, very experienced swimmer, especially in these distance events. This is this is like her home, this is her prime, this is her this is where she lives in these distance events, so very comfortable. You can see as well, she's really easing up on the legs, isn't she, Holly here? But a lot of upper body work being done at the moment compared to Polly Holden, who's giving in a bit of a kick and a splash to try and go towards the front and make that chase. But Holly Hibbert, certainly the one in control at this stage and uh, well, it looks like a very difficult task for Polly Holden to uh, close this one down as we uh, come towards the final stage of this but you have to say James this has gone the way that Holly Hibbert would have wanted coming into the race yeah I think so yeah I think I, I mean for me I think she's probably had a chat with Sean a coach and decided on how they wanted to pace it how they wanted to race it I know at the forefront of Holly's mind, she just wants to win this race. She wants to win it, and she wants to do. She wants, she wants to post a good time, you know. Um, and it looks like she's going to do just that. She's going to be around that, that 8.22 marker again, maybe just under. PB of 8.19.19, and it's not completely out of reach here close, yeah, for Holly Hibbert. Also worth saying as well that in lane two, Leah Crisp has had a, a good strong finish to her race to try and close down Polly Holden but at the front it's Holly Hibbert who touches in at 8.19, 8.7 just outside of her personal best there but certainly smashes the season's best that she got 
last month and then in second spot Polly Holden touching in on 8.28.02 she can go quicker than that and she has this year as well Leah Crisp in uh, third place there as we say a strong finish from her 8.30.8.9 and uh, that completes your top three but of course yeah, senior and commemorative medals on offer hit and they will be uh, distributed of course depending on the age categories Holly Hibbert no doubt though ending a strong year in terms of her 800 meter freestyle performances just missing out at the Commonwealth Games in this event but here in the short course format at Ponds Forge in Sheffield she has won the first race of the evening session winning time for the Stockport Metro swimmer 8.19.87 Polly Holden second and Leah Crisp in third well, a terrific swim from Holly Hibbert, a terrific time as well at this time of the year. Such a good year for her. And as you were saying on the commentary, James, a swimming you know really well up at Stockport. And just speak to me a little bit about what sort of magic makes that Stockport team tick, because there does seem to be something in the water up there. Yeah, it's just got a, it's got a great setup. I mean, the, from the coaches all the way down to the teaching staff, to the admin guys behind, you know, back, you know, behind the scenes. Um, it's got that great family feel to it. You know, we, we grow our swimmers from the grassroots, literally from learn to swim all the way to the Olympians. That's what we pride ourselves on. Um, and we always have. Um, so we've always produced, you know, homegrown, great swimmers. Um, and Holly's a prime example of that. Um, and it's just a great setup. It's a great setup. And we've got great coaches as well, which is, which is what it's about. Yeah, big swim from Holly Hibbert there. And uh, we're heading into our next race here. We're in, into the men's 50 metre freestyle. We've got the B final coming up. As Jonathan mentioned on commentary, two sets of finals this evening. So we'll see the juniors head them up and then the seniors follow them in. And for the juniors, James, it's, it's a big meet for them, isn't it? Because it's a chance. They're getting the same introduction as the, the rest of the swimmers here. The music, the lights, all the atmosphere, they're, they're part of it. And that is, for some of them, their first time ever experiencing that on the big stage. And that's a big deal. Yeah, for sure. And it's a fast pool as well. You know, this is Sheffield. It's a fast pool. It's, it's probably our fastest pool in the, in the country. Um, so it's a great chance to get it and race fast, post some fast times, you know, build that confidence up by hitting it in the water and, uh, you know, doing personal best times for these juniors. That's what it'll be about. Here we go then, we'll hand you back to our commentator, Jonathan Bell. Of course, the expectation over the course of this weekend will be that the records will fall in the junior categories. And it's the A final, not completely full with junior swimmers, but they certainly are in the main in that sense. And a couple of our guests as well, David Thompson in four and Curtis Coulter in lane five from Bang Up as they come into the wall and David Thompson is the one who has done it. He will get the commemorative medal then, 22-3-1 with Curtis Coulter, his Irish teammate, following closely behind him. But in terms of the English swimmers, it's Jacob Whittle of Deventure Excel with 23-2-2 being able to uh, touch in there. And it's a uh, good time from him, big improvement as well from earlier on today in the heats. The Adventure Swimmer managing to get a new PB there as well by nine hundredths of a second. Certainly a race when you watch it at a 50 metre event, isn't it James, on, on short course that goes by like the blink of an eye. Yeah, and what a swim. Great swim from David Thompson. It was 22.31. Uh, I mean, that's, that's quick. That's really quick, you know. Maybe he should have done the, uh, could he have done the senior final? I mean, I know he's a... Uh, if he'd have done that time this morning, I'm sure he would have he would have made it into that final tonight. So it's a fantastic swim from the youngster. Well, here we have the A final now. These are the fastest 10 swimmers from uh, earlier on today. And uh, incidentally, in lane zero as well from City of Manchester Aquatics, the uh, oldest in the pool, alongside Alexander Smith, who's coming out through the tunnel now. In lane zero, Felipe Rodriguez, seven-time Paralympic medalist, taking part in lane zero and uh, also coming out now Tom Fannon who's got the uh, fastest English time of 2018 in this event and uh, he will certainly be the favourite out of the English swimmers we've got swimmers here as well Yuri Casil in lane four from Canada and uh, I mean, that is a, an added test as well for the English swimmers when we have the, the Canadian guests coming in, and we expect them to be quite successful over the next couple of days as well, James. Yeah, it's a, it's a great chance to race. You know, it's supposed to be a national event, but with these guys coming, it makes it slightly international, and it's a great opportunity to see 
what Canada has to offer and, you know, beat the Canadians. That's what I'd be thinking all the time. And I'm sure some of these guys will be thinking the same thing. So we wait the start of this one, then the A final of the men's 50 metre freestyle. And Tom Fannin certainly a keen eye on him in lane three and a very fast start coming in in lane two as well from uh, Alexander Smith of Woking as they uh, come to the wall at the halfway point and it's very tight in the centre it is Tom Fannin in lane three and Yuri Kassil of HT, uh, HPC Ontario as well coming in towards the wall it will be HPC Ontario's Yuri Kassil who gets the first touch 21-5-2 Tom Fannin coming in second and Joseph Page of Hamilton in third spot, 22-0-6. Uh, Ryan Flanagan and Harry Stacey up there for the uh, English swimmers as well, but a, a great time there. You can see Fannin and Cassil really spurring each other on with times well under 22. Yeah, pretty strong swim. Um, I, I don't feel like Yuri Kissel did, didn't quite get off the blocks like the way he wanted to, I don't think. And, uh, I think that's something you can maybe go and have a little look on. His coach Ben Titley's over here. Some of you guys might remember the name. Ben Titley used to be a British swimming coach uh, at Loughborough. At Loughborough. Uh, coached, you could co coach Fran Halsall and uh, Lizzie Simmons. And now he's uh, producing some great talent out there in Austra um, Australia. Pardon me, in Canada. So that's the uh, first of the men's events for the night. Very shortly we'll uh, have the women's 100 metre breaststroke. But uh, a couple of very interesting races there indeed in the men's 50 metre freestyle and certainly in that first final, the B final with the junior swimmers, some quick times as well that uh, certainly are knocking on the door of age group record breaking territory and we'll wait to see in this women's 100 metre breaststroke final if the uh, same will take place there as well. Yeah, well, thank you very much Jonathan, it's, it's hotting up isn't it? I mean Two great races already in the uh, in the sprints. The next one, we really are hoping to be an absolute humdinger. The women's 100 meter breaststroke. We've got the B final first, James, and there's some good young swimmers in that one. But just preview the A final for us: Kira Smith, Siobhan Marie O'Connor, Katie Matz, Molly Renshaw. First of all, can you pick a winner out of that four? Well, I mean, I mean, no is the, the answer, which is great, <laughs> which is great for us yeah. because you know, it's great for the viewers as well because it's it's such a stacked final. Like I said before, 0 0.6 of a second, 0 0.7 sorry of a second, separating the top six swimmers in this. You know, Sarah Vasey, the Commonwealth gold medalist in the 50, is in lane two. I mean, that's how quick this heats was, and that's how stacked this final is. So it's gonna be exciting. Who's gonna win? I'm not sure. We're gonna find out. That's gonna be exciting. That's what we're here for, and some of the youngsters making their way out now for the B final. And in terms of what we saw from the last race, James, Yuri Casil taking the win, first win of the night for Canada. We're not anticipating necessarily to be the last either. Yeah, they've got a strong, strong team here. We've got a couple of the ladies here who are on fire, or oh, they seem to be on fire. Um, Sanchez, we've got Sanchez coming up, who's going to be competing against Siobhan in a couple of races. Couple of, uh, could be a good a couple of head-to-heads there between those two uh, young ladies. And uh, yeah, they've got a good, strong squad here, which is great, which is great for our swimmers. What we love to see. It's the B-final of the 100 breast, and it's over to Jonathan Bell. Thank you, Steve. We're hoping that this is a fitting warm-up then for that blockbuster of an A-final we've got just around the corner. And uh, a lot of girls in this pool, well in form right now, a lot of PBs going this morning. In fact, six of the uh, seven of the ten swimmers in the pool have managed to get a PB today, including our fastest two, Rebecca Kleins in lane four of City of Leeds, and uh, also Rachel Taylor of Newcastle in lane five. But at the moment, it's Kleins in four that leads the way out of those two, with Tabitha Monkhouse not quite far behind them either. As you'd expect, swimmers very much close with one another but it does seem to be going to form as they make this turn hit for the final time with that arrow like formation and at the tip of it it's the yellow cap of City of Leeds and Rebecca Kleins who is coming into the wall here with a very good time indeed significantly better than the time she got this morning it's uh, 10836 so I think we'll have to wait for confirmation of that it did seem quicker than that I have to say Lee Robinson and Tabitha Monkhouse in second and third, respectively. Rebecca Kleins, 106.97. Significant improvement there on the personal best for her. 
Yeah, big drop. I mean, that's what you want to see from your juniors as well. You know, doing the doing a very solid heat swim this morning and then backing it up in that final. And she's dropped what one and a half over one and a half seconds uh, in this uh, oh, about dead on one and a half seconds in this final, which is a huge drop. But that's what you want to see. You want to see that progression from the heat to the final. Uh, and this young lady from uh, Leeds has uh, has really done that well. Rachel Taylor, five hundredths of a second off her PB for her as well. So a good swim for our top two. And uh, they'll be hoping, some of those in there, that they've done enough for a, a junior medal here as ever the B final. Bit of a mix, prominently with the junior swimmers, but there is the odd senior in there as well. But the next race, certainly one, James, stack full of seniors. And as you were saying there, so difficult to pick a winner out of this one. It's going to be really interesting how this materialises. I think, you know, it's just, it, uh, w watching the heats this morning, it was just, it was it was brilliant. It was, it really was. And I mean, I didn't expect it when I was coming here. I didn't expect to see the heats so, so quick and so, so competitive. But it's great. I mean, sometimes that's what short course racing does, though, you know, because, you know, it, it, it's not a major event for us. We don't do any massive major competition short course, which I personally think we should. I think we should do more. But for a lot of these swimmers, they can come here with a bit of freedom, really push themselves, race hard, race fast short course, and, 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 and go for it with that, with that freedom. Sometimes when you haven't got that pressure on your back, your stroke can relax a little bit, you know, your, your, your technique can kind of come together. And uh, with a lot of these girls, it's just about racing hard, racing fast. And you can see Sarah Vasey, I've said it a few times now, but Sarah Vasey is in lane two. She's a Commonwealth gold medalist in the 50 metres breaststroke. So she's a sprinter, you know, she's a quick, quick sprinter. So this could be, be between one of maybe six or seven swimmers. Well, it is Chavall Marie O'Connor who's got the fastest British time of 2018. And she uh, set that last month in Japan at the FINA Swimming World Cup. And uh, that was a time of 105.07. Incidentally, her personal best as well, she got there. And is there room for manoeuvre on that time? It may need it, you know, it's a bit the likes of... Kira Smith in lane four, Katie Matz, Molly Renshaw in there as well. Molly Renshaw getting a season's best earlier on today of 106.57. It's certainly an exciting one on the way here, the A final of the women's 100 metre breaststroke. Oh, Siobhan, oh my word. I, I mean, I, I, I don't want to say anything to her, but Siobhan's been disqualified there. Siobhan went way early. Wow, what a start to this race. I mean, we knew, I mean, this is it. This is the thing because this race is so stacked and I know Siobhan is a huge competitor. She does not like to lose. She's twitched on the block there, Siobhan, because she wants to get away fast. She knows she's got to get a good start. You know, she knows she's got to get away quick because it's such a stacked final. I don't know whether that's had a part to play with Siobhan. It'd be the most experienced from her. Oh, by, oh my word. Wow, more drama. It's Imogen Clark instead who's got off to the uh, better start. The Loughborough University swimmer. You can just see the black cap over there on uh, lane seven. And she's been successful over the 50 metre distance this year. But it's now over the 100 where she's asserting her authority. You can see a bit of a kickback now from Molly Renshaw. Yeah, nice turn from Molly Renshaw. Nice turn. She's coming back. Siobhan, Siobhan, Siobhan knows. I think Siobhan knows. That's why she's not in, in the mix here. And it's going to be out there in lane seven. And Imogen Clark indeed does it. A tenth of a second ahead of Molly Renshaw, the two Loughborough University swimmers locking horns there uh, on the far side. The DQ is confirmed. We have got on our monitor for Siobhan Marie O'Connor. And uh, as you say, I think you could tell by the way she was swimming the rest yeah. of that race that she, she knew the writing was on the wall there. But Imogen Clark nevertheless went out there, perfect swimming. It just shows you it's all right doing it in the pool, but if you can't get your start right, it doesn't really matter. Well, yeah, and this is it. And because it was so, we've been talking about picking it up all day, you know, this final, because it's because it's so stacked, because it's so close. And I think Siobhan's just got, I don't know, maybe a bit excited, and you know, she, more than twitch. I mean, she you know, blatantly moved on the at the start and, uh, and, and uh, rightly disqualified, which is a real shame, but great swim from Im Imogen Clark, you know, out there in lane seven. Not the easiest lane to uh, to compete in, but she's uh, she took it out quick, she took it out strong. She wanted that race from the start, you know, she she wanted to push it and uh, she did fantastic. Yeah, very good swim indeed there from uh, Imogen Clark. And it was good to see, despite the DQ there right at the start, the race did not disappoint itself as it transpired. Imogen Clark getting her head down and getting to work really with that a fantastic swim there and you have to say the big question before that race was whether it would live up to his own expectation but certainly drama in it and Imogen Clark reigns supreme 
Well, drama's the words. Goodness me. We've hyped this race up all evening so far, James. That was not the start we expected. Well, no, not at all. I mean, from the most experienced swimmer in the pool, you know, multiple medalist on every single level. Um, and I, I saw it straight away. I mean, I was doing the commentating down there, and the, the, as soon as the, the, the beep went, I a little twitching. And maybe because she knew it was so stacked, because she knew, she knew it was so close, she needed that good start off the block. She was so anxious to get in the pool. I think something just twitched. You know, the referee didn't hold it for too long. It was a perfect start from the referee. I think it was just one of those moments where she thought, I've got to get a good start. I've got to get fast off the blocks and made the mistake. Hey, it happens to the best of them. Even at meets yep. like this, it's an Olympic silver medalist at the 200 IM. It, it really can happen to anyone. A word for the winner as well, Imogen Clark. What a scalp that is for yeah, her. Yeah. Incredible race. Yeah, great swim from Imogen. Um, took it out strong, took it out fast. Um, just took just one of those races where she decided, I want to win this race. I want to go, I'm going to go out the quickest, I'm going to go out the fastest, I'm going to dominate this race from start to finish, I'm not going to let anyone catch me, and that's exactly how she swam it. Yeah, terrific swim from Imogen Clark, huge congratulations to her. We move swiftly on to our next event then, it is the men's 200 metre backstroke, we kick off with the B final, there's the lineup, and here's Jonathan Bell. Well, a uh, smooth start this time around from all 10 swimmers in this one, and the best of them, you can see shooting down on the near side there, Mark Edmondson. In lane zero of Team Bath, comfortably making the uh, first turn there. And an ideal start and a good turn from him as well, really hanging under the water very strongly. Also look to uh, Max Jameson in lane four from Thanet, who is the only swimmer in the pool who has ever swum under two minutes. 159.69 is his PB. But there's certainly a lot of swimmers, as we look at the lineup here, James, that are flirting around just under that two-minute mark, haven't quite yet achieved it. Yeah, it's a great barrier to break. That two minutes is so, so important as a swimmer to break. And these guys, what, they're 15 years old? Uh, 15, 16, 17 years old, yeah, you know, so, I mean, I, I mean, a lot of these guys should be should be under two minutes by now, you know, it's short, short course, obviously quicker than long course. Uh, they can use those turns, really work that underwater work. Um, you know, that just seeing a lad go one kick off the turn, you know, I, when you get to this level, when you get to the, you know, when you start wanting to push the top top end, you need, you can't be doing one fly kick off the turns. You've got to be going at least 10 meters. Even though he, I know Ryan Lochte and Michael Phelps and those guys aren't swimming anymore, but those guys are going 10, 15 meters underwater, and their underwater is two meters per second, which is really, really fast. So you've got to be working at that the whole time, you know, in training every single day in training, hitting that underwater. So these guys under two minutes, which we're, we're going to see here, I think, by the looks of it, uh, McFadden's gone 126.92 at the 150, which is quick. So he should be around the 157 mark. Yeah, the pool really has dispersed now, hasn't it? And it is Loughborough University's James McFadden, who is one of the uh, older competitors in the pool here for this one, turning uh, 19 years old this year. In fact, his 20th birthday is on New Year's Day, so that's not too far around the corner. But can he get under that two-minute barrier? He should do with relative ease coming into the wall. 156, 64. That is a big chunk off the PB indeed and you can say the same as well for Max Jameson of Thanet Swim who's managed to get another second or so off of his and Nick Skelton as well as City of Oxford 158.78 you look at the top five there all under two minutes yeah I, I mean yeah it's a good swim for McFadden I would like to have seen him go that this morning you know it's it's I mean for some of these guys that's it it's easy to go you know easy in the morning and then pick it up in the final you know that's 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 not a you know it's not an issue yeah i would have liked to have seen him go 156 or 157 this morning and then pushed it again and maybe gone a little bit quicker tonight well james mcfazen was the silver medalist from the british summer championships earlier on this year in the 19 years and over category and he's managed to top the podium on this occasion in that respect but of course it is our uh, seniors coming up the likes of Luke Greenback, Jacob Greenow, Elliot Clog in there as well. It's another race where you, you look around and it's a really talented field. And you're also looking for a couple of the juniors that will be in there as well. On more of the outer lanes, Jacob Davies will have coming up in lane one. And on the outside lanes, it's Harry Noble and Charlie Brown. They'll be the first two to be uh, introduced to the crowd, but certainly another one to whet the appetite. Yeah, it is. I mean, there's... Uh a little advert to all the young swimmers out there just keeping your eyes on Luke Greenbank in the centre of the pool they'll be in lane number four great turns and great underwater work that's what we want to be seeing from our swimmers so just keep a little look at look out for Luke in and out of Loughborough University coached by Mel Marshall you know same coach as Adam Peaty so he gets to train next to Olympic gold medalist every day 
Uh, but great turns, great underwater work. And uh, that's what we want to strive for as a swimmer. Yeah, Luke Greenbank is the uh, fastest swimmer in Britain this year. In this event, 153.29 is the uh, time he managed to get. But he a TV of 152.62. And hopefully it'll be that sort of time he will be inching towards. But here are some of the uh, real main contenders now. Millfield's Brody Williams being welcomed out to the crowd. And a good year for him. Jacob Greenell as well of University of Bath. Another one who's uh, turns 20 on New Year's Day. But the home favourite, Elliot Clogg. And now Luke Greenbank being introduced to the crowd. And uh, certainly focus on them for this race. Yeah, it's going to be tough to beat Luke, I think. He's, uh, he's by far the favourite. Can Elliot Clogg push him in this two minutes backstroke? But I think Luke's the one to beat. Luke's going to be the one who's, uh, who's going to take out strong. And 152 this morning, I'm sure he's going to want to go quicker tonight as well. Yeah, Elliot Clogg swim from uh, earlier today. Certainly better than his uh, previous swim competitively that he swam last month at the... Uh, Leicester Open, that was 158.37. Here today, getting a time of 154.57. That's uh, quite a big difference. But will he be good enough to challenge Luke Greenbank in this one? Or will someone else take it? The men's 200 backstroke A final. go and uh, quite a few strong starts being made there in particular by Luke Greenbank in lane four and also in lane two as well Nicholas Pyle of Newcastle it's worth mentioning managed to get off to a good start turns uh, 18 on Monday does Nick Pyle yeah some of those starts dead on 50 meters weren't they Luke Greenbank's heads broke up right on 14.9 meters which is close but it's perfect right you know you want to get right on that 50 meter mark that takes a lot of practice you know you've got to practice that a lot in training so you don't get disqualified so uh see luke's got those skills you can see Brody williams turning up there towards the front as well it's certainly the central lanes and they're doing most of the hard work currently led by greenbank in lane four where he's got two to uh the left of him now in lanes five and six it's elliot clogg who is level pegging with Brody williams in second position but it seems with every stroke and every turn in particular, it is Lou Greenbank that is getting further and further away from the rest of the pool. Yeah, you can see he's just edges. He maybe gets maybe, you know, less, just maybe 0.2 of a metre on every single turn. But you can see, the, you know, his, his swimming speed's maybe not as quick as the other boys. Maybe it's about the same, but with every turn, like you said, you can see, look at that, you see? Every single turn he does those fly kicks, you can see he just pulls away from those boys every single time. He's not swimming any faster than the other lads. So he's in the lead because of his turns, which is so important in short course. Well, lots of little battles going off in the pool at the moment. You've got the three on the far side, three on the near, and the main three down the centre coming in now as well. So Luke Greenbank coming in here with a time it will be just over 150 into the wall at one. We're waiting for the confirmation of his time. Second, Elliot Clogg on 152.35. And third, Brody Williams on 152.54. But the winning time, we have it confirmed now, is 151.16. And it's a big improvement. Almost one and a half seconds off there for Luke Greenbank. By far and away, the quickest British time of the year. And what a way to end the year as well for the Loughborough University man. Second position held by City of Sheffield's Elliot Clogg. And he has been able to oust Brody Williams from that silver medal by 0.19 seconds. So Luke Grimbank is the winner of the men's 200 metre backstroke, a final here in Sheffield. He certainly is. Well, great swim from Luke Greenbank and a really impressive one as well because he, he, he's got to the point now where he, he feels like he needs to have a big year. Yeah, Luke. yeah, he needs, that, he needs that kind of breakthrough moment that you know, he drops from 157 long course to 154s. That's where we need him at, you know, to be competing at the top, top level. 151-1, one, 
Very solid short course this time of year. Not far off the British record. I think it was Chris Walker Heaven's British record of 150 points something. But uh, really, really close to it. Um, so yeah, we just need to look just at that lane. That when it gets to that long course stage, just to step it up that one more gear um, to compete with those, for those medals. So he still had a very successful year. He's, he's, he's one of those stories we talked about this a little bit earlier this morning, where he seems to have been around forever, but actually he's still got a lot of time on his side. He can still very much improve and grow as a swimmer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, he's still got that time. We've seen a few late bloomers um, in the British swimming uh, world. You know, like the James. Willbys. I mean, we talked about Adam Peaty to some degree coming through a little bit late as well. So, you know, if you can get that 100 metres backstroke firing as well, and the 200 metres, you know, the 100 metres backstroke got great chance in the relay. We've got some good boys in that relay for, and I'm talking Olympic gold medal. You know, you, if you've got you've got James Guy on the fly, you've got uh, Peaty on the breaststroke, you've got uh, who have we got on the freestyle? Ben Proud. Ben Proud and um, Scottish. P Duncan Scott. Pick Duncan Scott. Duncan Scott. Anyone. There we go. Yeah, pick yeah. Pick but, anyone you like. We've got a really, really strong, you know, so. Uh, Backstroke's just our slight weak link. If Luke yeah. can really pick it up in that under backstroke, we're not just talking Commonwealth gold medals, we're talking Olympic gold medals. Yeah. So, yeah, big chance for him. It really is. And it's been a, it's a sort of frustrating year for him because he went to the Commonwealth Games, almost one of the poster boys of the tournament, two fourths, which, I mean, yeah. as, a, as, a, as a swimmer, you're instantly thinking, oh, the poor, the poor guy. Yeah. It's, it's not nice. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, fourths. Worst, worst, worst position spot. to finish, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I know my better than Not anybody. rubbing that in. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, it sucks. Uh, he won't be happy with that at all. Yeah, I mean, no swimmer is happy with fourth in the slices. So um, hopefully that'll give him that motivation. He's training down at Liverpool University with Mel Marshall as coach. He's got he's alongside Adam Peaty every single Couldn't day. Wish training for a better coach in Mel either. I, I mean, this, yeah, I mean, she's the perfect coach. Um, got perfect personality for for being a coach. So hopefully he can step up. You know, I want him to get out of that fifth gear, get into that sport mode that we've been talking about, so he can compete with us for those medals at the top top level. Because as a youngster, he was he was incredible. I mean, two. Two, uh, two medalists, really, Youth Olympics and World Juniors. He, he yeah. won medals at the elite of, of junior swimming. Yeah, yeah, he won the gold at World Juniors in time of 156 long course, which is quick, right? Yeah. That, I mean, that, that, is, that is really, really quick. And he hasn't gone quicker since, and that was a couple of years ago, which is really, really surprising because he looks bigger, he looks stronger, he looks, you know, more mature. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what's going on uh, with him. Very solid swim there. Hopefully he can take that confidence from that one. You know, one, that's a big personal best yeah. time for him. Hopefully he can take that confidence into his training over the next few months. We'll see him in trials in April. Let's see if he can do something special there. Well, we certainly hope so. Our next race is going to be a bit of a good one as well. We're from the 200 back, the 200 IM for the women. We'll first have the B final, but just ahead of the A final, massive one this for Siobhan Marie O'Connor. It goes without saying. Breaststroke is now a write-off. She's got to put that to the back of her mind and go at her favourite race. Yeah, uh, well, I will put the 100 breaststroke behind us, I think, for, in terms of Siobhan Marie O'Connor. She's got this Kayla Sanchez from uh, Canada. It's going to be a real ding-dong, real head-to-head. -head. Um, I think Siobhan likes that sort of thing. Um, tough competitor, real racer. She won't be happy with the breaststroke, obviously, so maybe she's got a bit of kind of pent-up frustration to take out with this two divine. Well, it should put a little bit of fire in her belly, we reckon. We're excited for this one. This is the B final. Some good names in this one as well. Should be a good race. Honey Osrin, Honey Osrin, should I say, was quickest in qualification. And to take you through it, here's Jonathan Bell. Well, one great thing about these National Winter Championships here at Ponce Forge is the variety of ages you get going head-to-head -head with one another. United in the fact they're so talented in the pool. But uh, in terms of ages, there's a real spectrum there. Freya Colbert, the youngest in this one, the age of 14 years in lane two. And the eldest of them, Molly Renshaw, in lane five, the 22-year-old Loughborough University athlete. Best start being made, though, by the uh, distinctive green hat in lane six of Amelia Sanson of uh, Wickham District. But uh, pretty even overall, it has to be said. And quite a few swimmers, you have to say, James, when you look at the times we got earlier on today, who are much more able of going quicker. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we expect Molly Renshaw to go a lot quicker. I mean, I expect Molly to win it. I'm not sure how she's swimming at the minute. She's kind of cruised a little bit on that. I mean, she's a strong breaststroker, so she's going out maybe a little bit slow on this flying backstroke. She'll pull it back on the breaststroke, hopefully. I'm not sure what kind of stage she's training she's in. She looks a little bit lethargic, a little bit tired in her swimming, so maybe she's feeling the pain from training. Um, great start from lane four, though. It is, and that is Honey Osrin with the PB earlier on. As Steve mentioned, she was the quickest in qualification, 2.15.3.1. Managed to uh, take home three gold medals and a bronze as well at the uh, British Swimming Championships. One of them in the 200 IM. Of course, that is long course, but 
course there are the obvious differences between the two but it is the same race in terms of the strokes and she again the dominant force yeah you can see molly renshaw starting to come through now really really dominant breaststroke powerful strong long breaststroke and here she comes molly renshaw so far down wasn't she she's was like two body lengths down before the breaststroke and this is what a good breaststroke can do on an, on an individual medley from two body lengths down now she's half a body length ahead of everyone and i think molly's got quite a strong free star so you'd expect her maybe to hold off these two younger Summers but a great chance for Honey Osrin and uh, Eve Robinson maybe to challenge this international. I remember being a junior, I used to really want to beat the seniors. It was like, it was just one of my, every time I went to a senior meet, I really wanted to beat the seniors because I wanted to prove a point that juniors could do it as well. And Honey Osrin, look at her powering home. She's going to be really close to beating Molly on the touch. Yes, well done, Holly. Uh, honey, sorry. Good swim. Oh, what a fantastic finish that was between the two. A real ding-dong there between Osborne and Renshaw. The pendulum swung from one direction to the other, but ultimately in favour of the 15-year-old. Up against the more experienced, of course, Molly Renshaw. But not too much dividing the two of them at all there. Confirmation of the difference between the two times. 0.2 well, with Neve Robinson in third position. But a great swing from Honey Osrin, and she'll be absolutely chuffed with that. Yeah, it's, it's tough sometimes because she was so far ahead at the 100 metre mark. You know, she was two body lengths ahead of Molly, and then to see Molly go past her in the breaststroke, you know, for some swimmers that could be heartbreaking. It could, it could crush, your, crush your soul a little bit. Um, but Honey stuck with it, and she showed great resilience and great strength down that back 50 metres on the freestyle to then overtake Molly again. Um, it's a really, really good swim. Two now second PB for Honey Osrin and a season's best as well for Molly Renshaw. She's not quite in the top 10 from uh, this year, British times in this event, but she's not too far away at all. And her best swim of the calendar year, she's managed to secure that. But uh, Honey Osrin with a lifetime best and, well, we'd expect with the potential that the Plymouth Leander swimmer has, that she will go quicker and quicker with each and every meet. So that's the B final, and I think it's been a real testament we have to give tonight to the B finals for how they've uh, really whet the appetite for when it's come to the A final afterwards. There are no disappointing races here, and we're glad that you can uh, join us for them here on the BBC Sport website and the red button. You're watching the Swim England National Winter Championships 2018 live from Ponds Forge in Sheffield. And you know the atmosphere is about to increase when the uh, lights are switched off because we've got the A final coming up now, the women's 200 IM final. And again, eyes on Siobhan Marie O'Connor, but not because of how she's been performing coming into tonight, but how she's just performed in her previous race in the uh, breaststroke. I mean, what's the psychology of Siobhan going into this, James? I mean, I mean, I mean she'll be forgetting about it as quick as possible. I mean, she'll be obviously disappointed with it. I mean, there's, there's no two ways about it. But she's a very experienced swimmer. She's not, you know, she's not going to beat herself up too much about it. Um, she'll just want to win this race. I mean, I mean, it's as simple as that. She'll want to come in this race. She's got a tough, tough race because she's got Kayla Sanchez um, from the HPC Ontario from Canada um, in there in lane number four, who was 207 this morning, which is pretty quick. Siobhan's just going to want to get in this race and win. I mean, that, and that, it is as simple as that. Well, the uh, quickest time that Siobhan Marie O'Connor has got this year in this event was again in Tokyo. Proved to be a fruitful World Cup for her in Japan. That was a time of 2.07.65. But, as to say there, Kelly Sanchez, real hot property when it comes to this event, lining up in uh, lane four. So that will be the battle between the two of them. As we see Siobhan Marie O'Connor on the screen there, the University of Bass Swimmer. Yeah, Siobhan looks really focused, doesn't she? As you can see, she doesn't look best pleased, which is understandable. Slapping her thighs, slapping her arms. Kayla came out in lane number four, really happy, very smiley, very relaxed. Yeah, you can see the cameras on these two. I, I think it's going to be between these two. Maybe Abby Wood can do something special and, uh, and challenge these two, but it's, I think it's going to be Renshaw v Sanchez in this race.
Here we go then, and it's a clean start this time in the women's 200 metre individual medley final. And uh, for Maria O'Connor, certainly determined to make amends and certainly put in the back of her mind the previous race in the uh, breaststroke. But decent start on the fly there up alongside Kayla Sanchez. And uh, also you can see the black captain lane three of Abbey Wood as well. Yeah, Siobhan's got a really strong butterfly. So is Abbey Wood. So Sanchez by the looks of it as well. So good start from Abbey Wood. And a great turn there from Amy Bell, wasn't it? In lane two going on to the backstroke. And you know, if this is a, a stroke that she favours, she certainly likes the breaststroke as well. That turn, that initial turn, before you've even done any of the hard work yet, is absolutely vital. And she's now managed to plunge herself up towards the top. In lane three. Yeah, maybe Abby Woods decided, you know, I've, I've got to go out fast. I've got to go. Great turn, though. Look at this. Great turn from Kayla Sanchez. Do you see how she was behind on that turn? Oh, Abby Wood turned first, right? And now look. And that was just on the turn. These are the importance of turns, especially short course. Wonderful skills from Kayla Sanchez. Getting that backstroke to breaststroke turn to perfection. Timed it really well and takes out Abby Wood by half body length just on that turn. Siobhan Marie O'Connor trying to stay afloat there in that front trio with uh, Amy Bell just lingering on the tail end. But well, Kayla Sanchez really now beginning to come into her own. Uh, she uh, now turns onto the freestyle and she can really put the foot to the floor now. Yeah, she's. you could see when she walked out behind the blocks, Kayla Sanchez, was. she was very smiley, very relaxed, very comfortable. She's got really good skills as well. You can see she look at the very nice turns. Look, it's five or six kicks off the wall. Very nice, skillful swimmer, Kayla Sanchez. So the best British time of the year, 2.07.65, but Kayla Sanchez, well, it's not a million miles away from world record territory there, a couple of seconds out or so, as Kayla Sanchez touches in on 2.04.64. It's a tremendous time uh, from the HPC Ontario swimmer, 17 years of age, and uh, really stamping her authority here in the Steel City tonight. Abby Wood then the leader of the English swimmers coming in, 207-13, a strong overall performance from her. And Siobhan Marie O'Connor of Bath University leads home the rest of the pack. She just beats Amy Bell to that position with a time of 209-03. So it's Kayla Sanchez who will be pleased with that. And we'll have plenty of Canadian guests over the course of the weekend battling for commemorative medals and she has managed to secure one there but there will be senior medals on offer for Abby Wood, Siobhan Marie O'Connor and uh, Amy Bell as well as we conclude that the women's 200 IM final and it's Kayla Sanchez who wins it. It certainly was and what a great swim from Kayla Sanchez showing there James that these Canadians are they're not here to take part not quite here to take over, there's not enough of them for that, to use that famous quote, but they are putting our swimmers here under some real intense pressure, and they're yeah. not up to it at some levels. Yeah. Kayla Sanchez, I they're mean, looking terrific. Yeah, they've travelled a long way, right? They've not come here just to take part, they've come here to, just to try and conquer. I mean, I mean, Kayla Sanchez looked great. From the moment she walked out behind the block, she was smiling. I, mean, I just, just tried to compare her with Siobhan. I mean, Siobhan's obviously not firing here. You know, she's, you can see maybe she's a little bit tired. She, I don't know if from training, maybe from the previous race, I'm not sure. But Kayla Sanchez, when she walked out behind the block, she was smiley, she was relaxed, she was tapping her arms. She seemed like, you know, she was, she was just ready to race. Where Siobhan, she seemed kind of, you know, a little bit tense and a little bit, you know, didn't seem quite happy in her face. And Kayla Sanchez, great skills, great backstroke to breaststroke turn. If anyone gets a chance to watch that, that race back, Abby Wood, maybe just about 0.2 of a second ahead, with that backstroke to breaststroke turn, Sanchez came Race off flipped. half a body length ahead off the, off the backstroke to breaststroke turn. That's how important turns are nowadays in swimming, um, especially in the short course races. And Kayla Sanchez, still only 17. She is a really, yeah. she's a star of the future, isn't she, on an international stage? Yeah, she looks strong though as well. Like, you know, she's quite muscular, she's quite ripped, you know, she, she, she looks really mature and, and strong and powerful. So, and 204, 204 is quick. Like, well, that is quick. That's only a, a two, or, two or three seconds off world record. Yeah, I yeah. think Katinka Hoshu holds that from back yeah. in 2014, which is, I mean, yeah. you're talking the best swim of all time there, but that's how good that was. Only yeah, a couple yeah. of seconds off that. Really quick swim, yeah. I mean, she's I mean, a long way to travel from Canada. You know, she might be a bit jet lagged, all that sort of stuff. Um, that very fast time, 204 is quick. But, she could, but you could see she was a very skillful swimmer. Yeah. Very skillful, great turns, technically superb. Um, 
so yeah, maybe one to watch for the future. For sure, former medley swimmer there as well, so you've got plenty to admire there yep. in that. For sure. So butterfly is next on the menu here, men's 100 metres butterfly. We'll start with the B final, but uh, in terms of the A final here, James Guy is going to be in action very, very shortly, taking on someone who is very capable of beating him here. Joe Litchfield might not be a mainstream name to, to some people, but in swimming circles, Joe's been around for, for plenty of time on a national level, and last year at this championships made a bit of a name for himself as well. Yeah, very good all-round swimmer, very good medley swimmer. Um, I don't think he's going to beat James there. I don't think he's going to have enough. James is very, very classy swimmer. Um, freestyle and bus fly. He's got the 100-meter fly, British record, long course. Um, but a very classy swimmer. I can't see James getting beat. Looks so strong and powerful in the water, James. He makes himself look big. It looks like he's got big arms, big hands, big feet. And you can see that, that real power in his stroke as well. So, I mean, James is the one to beat. I don't think Joe's going to... Um, challenge him. He'll, I mean, he'll challenge him. I don't think he's going he's gonna to beat James. Um, I think he's the one to beat. Big year for James, guys. Well, World Championship year. He's, World Championships is really where he's made his mark as an individual. Some of his Olympic medals have come in relays, but he's so good. It, it, it really feels like another big year for him. And that step to Tokyo, where it almost feels like that could be his crowning moment if he wants it to be. Yeah, he's in a really tough... It's almost like the Blue Ribbon event, isn't it? The 2 and freestyle. It's just such a stacked event. Um, I mean, they're all stacked, obviously, at the Olympics. I mean, it, 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 there's no, there's no easy, easy medal, event. Yeah. yeah, there's no easy medal. But the 2 and free is particularly difficult to win a medal in. Um, and James Guy is a previous world champion, of course. Um, can he do it at the Olympics? I think he can. I think he's got the skills. I think he's got the technique. I think he's got the mental attitude. I think he's got the work ethic. Um, he's a model swimmer. Um, if any youngsters want to look up to somebody, James Guy is the perfect, perfect athlete to do that. I really hope he does. I've got a lot of um, admiration for James Guy. Um, great, he's got a great family, he's got great support. He's a Manchester boy as well, which kind of helps out a little bit. But no, he's a, he's a perfect model swimmer. Really hope he does it. Um, and I think he's going to win this under fly tonight. Yeah, we certainly, we're certainly looking forward to seeing him. And a swimmer as well, he's, he's versatile. We've seen him do the 200 fly in the past, the 400 yeah. free as well. He sort of fine-tuned himself as he's got a little bit older. This is something we're talking about this morning, but as he tends to get a little bit more experience, tends to drop events that feel you're holding you back, and you feel, feel like he's, he's almost tunnel visioning now towards that goal of next yeah. year and the year after. Yeah, I mean, most swimmers do that. I mean, it's just a natural progression. The older you get, quite often, if you're a 400 swimmer, you might come down to the 200. If you're an 800 swimmer, you might come down to the 4. It's a natural kind of progression that swimmers, that swimmers take um, because it's quite grueling on the body, you know, to train for all these different events and compete at them over a certain number of days is really taxing on the body. And I think James Guy has just got that focus of, I, I can meddle in this 200 freestyle. I can do something special in 200 freestyle. That's what I want to focus on. He's obviously doing a bit of fly training as well because he's he's doing some fantastic. He's been 50 point long course for under fly, and we've already talked about that that foot men's four by 100 medley relay, which if like I said, if Luke can step up in that under backstroke, James Guy just goes 50 point. We've got Petey and Scott and Proud on the freestyle. Um, Take your pick. But yeah, I know. I, but that's Olympic gold. That's Olympic. You know, those guys are going to be challenging for Olympic gold. And even the four by two as well. There's so much ability there. It's, yeah. It, it's really, really exciting. And yeah. it, it's it's a great time to be a fan of British swimming, isn't it? For sure. Yeah. We had a great, great competition in Rio, um, and I'm hoping Tokyo is going to be even better. Uh, I know the Japanese will put on an amazing Olympic Games. I'm really, really yeah, jealous. Can't um, wait. No, yeah, I'm really. I've been to Japan a couple of times. It's my favourite country that I've ever been to, and I'm not just saying that. It is my favourite country that I've ever been to. Um, and the Japanese will put on an amazing Olympic Games. Yeah, we can't wait for that, of course. But before that, is the World Championships, which is, is such a. They're every two years. So they almost lose that little sense of esteem, but they are so important in the swimming calendar because yeah. that is the point where you know exactly where you are in the world before that Olympics. Yeah, for sure. And the World Championships the year before an Olympics always feels so important. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's um, your world champion. You know, if you can win a medal at Worlds, it's the World Championships, right? If you win gold, you are the world champion, and that's your that's your that's that, that's what you win. You win that title as well, you know. So yeah, it's really important for these guys. It's a big, big year. It's a bit like I say. And I've talked about confidence a lot. If you can go to the World Championships this year, do well, it's a great platform that next year of training to get into the Olympic Games and do well. I mean, this is where the season starts. You know, we're looking behind us and watching these guys swim. This is the very first event, really, of the season. Yes, they're in heavy training, but if they can pick up some maybe surprisingly good swims or some really good results or do something they weren't expecting, then all of a sudden it just sets them up for the year quite beautifully, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, for sure. And it, I'm, again, it's a, it's a confidence. It's just a confidence thing. It's like this in, in many sports, I'm sure. If your confidence is high, it's so much easier to train hard and train fast. 
and get in the gym and lift those weights and get up in the early mornings. You know, over here it's a little bit harder for us because it's cold and <laughs> Aussies and Americans have got it a bit easier, right? You can just go and short some flip flops every single day. <laughs> 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 yeah, but it, you know, but that's what it is. If we can come here, do some great times, put some good, you know, put some good racing together, then you can get back to training. It makes it kind of more worthwhile. I think a delay, ladies and gentlemen. We're just waiting, I think, for a, a few medal ceremonies which are making their way uh, onto the stage behind us very shortly. And just talk a little bit about, about our medalists so far. We saw in the first race this evening, Holly Hibbert looking yeah. tremendous. If you've just joined us, we saw the 800 freestyle, Holly Hibbert smashing it once again. Her, her great year yeah. ends on a high. Yeah, yeah, um, another season's best, 8.19.8 um, for Holly. Yeah, yeah, she'd be really shuffed um, a couple of months ago at Stop Up Me, she went 8.22. Um, so quicker again. Um, I think I reckon eight, under 820 was, was the target and she did it. Um, so coach will be happy as well. Very strong swim. She had a little bit of a challenge from the side of it, didn't she? But she held her off. Stay strong. Holly's tough, man. Holly's, Holly's tough. Like, I wouldn't want to have a fight with Holly. She <laughs> holds in races, doesn't she? Yeah, not just that. I wouldn't want to have a fight with Holly. If Holly hits you, you're in big, big trouble. You know, she's a big, <laughs> strong, powerful girl, Holly. Um, but she's got this kind of gritty endurance and this kind of sticks in races, doesn't she? Yeah, we saw we saw that European Championships. She, she almost it, she was almost not out of place, but her name stuck out a little bit. Because, oh, Holly's made the final. Go on, Holly. Let's see yeah. what we can do. But she, you always knew she was going to be in it because she just gets. She's got that nerve and grit to get into it and stay in there. Yeah, that's it. And challenge as well. You know, ch and challenge for medals. When she's in those finals, she likes to challenge for medals as well. And she's you know she's a real force. She is a force. I mean, I wouldn't want to mess with Holly. Um, but she, she's a cracking girl. I, I know she trains hard. I know she works hard. Um, <laughs> so, so it's about James Guy's family, Holly's family, a big swimming family as well. Um, Dad's out of uh, Southport. He's got his own uh, learn to swim program. So it's uh, it's fantastic to see. Yeah, a bit of a chuckle there from me as our medal presenter got used to the uh, the flames the down flames. on the pool side. I can feel the heat. It's hot enough as it is. There's flames blowing behind. Just it's unnecessary, just like, oh, isn't my it? Word. It's so hot under these lights. Then you add flames. Singeing what hair well. I've got left. Here come our medalists. So that's uh, Leah Crisp getting the uh, senior bronze there for City of Leeds. Now Fleur Lewis getting the junior silver medal, uh, Jimmy. And this, this was a, a swim that really stood out to us this morning. It wasn't yep. unfortunately available to us uh, this evening. She wasn't in the fastest heat. Yep. This Fleur's only 15 years of age and swam an unbelievable race. Yeah, she just, I mean, she just so, showed such re uh, resilience, um, such, such determination in great shape as well. You know, the Barnet Cops are in a great shape. Um, they're doing something well down there. At Barnet, um, really impressed. I mean, she just didn't seem to phase. She just seemed to hold that pace, hold that stroke. It was a very mature swim from the young, from the youngster, um, which was very, very impressive. I would like to have seen her maybe in this uh, final heat next year. You know, she can hopefully get to the uh, the final heat this 800, and we can see her against the uh, the top swimmers. So Polly Holden picking up the senior silver. Freya Colbert from Nova Centurion getting the junior gold, and Holly Hibbert there picking up the senior gold medal and uh, a nice big trophy as well which is always nice for a swimmer isn't it yeah, yeah a little bit extra silver in, um, yeah i'm sure it'll go on a dad's mantelpiece or something um i doubt she'll keep it at her house but, yeah. well i mean well she lives with the dad so i mean she'll uh make sense on, yeah it'll be on a dad's mantel in, in a in his trophy cabinet or something along with many of her other ones yeah, she's picked up a fair few honours in recent times. As we mentioned, a silver medal at the Commonwealth Games this year, bronze at the European Championships as well. And she won this event last year, so she's retained her crown. She's already got that trophy, she's just taking it back home. She's taking it back home, yeah. She's Packed it in a suitcase on the way here. Yeah, she has to go back to the, uh, the trophy guys to get it, get her name scratched in there again. <laughs> Well, we're just awaiting our second ceremony, which is on the way for you very, very shortly. You're going to see the medalists for the men's 50-metre freestyle. That was a nice little touch to get the juniors up on the uh, podium with the seniors. I think that's, I think, I, yeah, I, think I, I quite like that, you know, it's nice to, sometimes the juniors and the seniors kind of get separated and they're almost in two separate worlds, you know, but to get them on the podium together is, I quite like that little touch. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? And, I mean, you've you've won medals all, all around the world, I know, but when you do get that first national medal at a junior level, do you still remember that? Yes. Well, I mean, we've gone through the age group, national age group process, and it's huge. Like, as a junior, that's like, that's what you train for, you know, and it's there's a lot of pressure when you go to the national age group championship because you're racing the, the same people of the same age. So it's all the 40. When you, when you get to, when you're like 16 and you're racing a 25-year-old, 
there's a little bit of pressure off your back, right? But when you're 14, racing 14-year-olds, you don't want to lose. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's almost like it's more intense. Um, so, yeah, it's really important. The stages as a junior are very important to the pathway to seniors. Well, the flames are out, which means our yes. medalists <laughs> are gradually making their way towards the podium. Always found with some is it's and I, I mean this very much as a personal thing it's like herding cats James right <laughs> okay <laughs> eventually they've made their way there ambling so, together in a big group of six no one wanted to step forward this is it I mean it's kind of funny you know it's happy to stand in front of thousands of people in your little speedos but then <laughs> stand behind a podium and shake someone's hand is a little bit more daunting Looks like one of our medalists hasn't turned up either. Oh, he's going to look a little bit lonely on that podium now, but the Silvers are on their way soon. You can also see that the Canadian behind the uh, the podium as well there, and wasn't he brilliant, Yuri Kassil? I mean, he's, he's got a moustache that I know both of us are quite envious of, but <laughs> he is one heck of a swimmer as well. So we, could, we could rock that look tomorrow if you want. I mean, absolutely not. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, yeah, maybe not. No, no, he had a good swim. Yeah, really good swim, quick off the blocks. Um, I thought, actually, I thought he missed a little bit off his start, Yuri. I think he quite got that. When he ended the water, he didn't quite get that zip through the water that we, uh, maybe we, we usually see from like the likes of like Ben Proud, whose starts are so quick. Well, speaking of Ben Proud, an interesting winner of the, of the gold medal once it comes, uh, Tom Fannin. Almost like... Ben Proud 2.0, same club, exactly the same event, built exactly the same way with yep. those huge shoulders and the tall stature. So, so similar. And it's just another one off the conveyor belt there. He's, he's uh, gone to Loughborough University now, as we see uh, Yuri Kassil get his commemorative gold. And uh, a nice moment here for Tom. He's, he's needing to now take that next step that Ben did, but I mean, he's, he's got time on his side, still very young. Yeah, for sure. You can see the difference in statures, can't you, if you look at Fanon compared to compared to uh, Kassil. Look how skinny Kassil looks there. His legs look like twigs, but he's uh, he's got some there's some twitch about him. He's technically very, very good. Um, you know, so you can see the different, different sizes in the swimmers as well. It's always going to help you to have an absolutely massive set of shoulders when it comes to that 53 yeah. style, isn't it? You were standing a little bit like a breaststroke, actually. See his toes point out like that. That's how breaststrokers stand usually. Not 50 meters freestyles, but he can move. The Canadian can move. He can indeed, and yeah. what's been so impressive actually about the about the Canadians in particular is they seem to just have it together with the team spirit. Quite a small pack of them that make their way over to Sheffield. We saw them last year, we saw them in the summer as well, but they're all really, really enjoying it. I don't know yeah. if it's because it's slightly warmer here than it would be in Canada. I mean, you're talking minuses either way, but they seem to really enjoy coming here to Sheffield. Yeah, I think swimmers in general like going abroad and racing. I mean, it's fun, right? You know, it's better than just going down the road 20 minutes to, or half an hour to swim at your local swimming club. You know, these guys have come all the way to Britain to race, and it's funny. It'd be like the opposite if we flew over to Canada. It'd be great fun, right? It'd be great fun to go there, race can the, the Canadians, try and beat them on the home soil, and that's exactly what they're thinking as well. Where is the favourite place that you raced in, in your time? Um, <laughs> was that probably Manchester, actually? Oh, you can't say, say that. No, one of my favourite races, because I won the Commonwealth Gold in Manchester in 2002, so that was, my, that, you know, that was a very memorable race. Um, I liked swimming outdoors. Um, we used to go on a training camp to Australia, uh, to South Africa, um, with Stockport uh, every January, February time. So I really enjoyed doing that. Love training in the rain, actually. Big fan of backstrokes training in the rain. Just something peaceful about training it's in the rain. Very, very Manchester. I have that. Very, opinion, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but it was warm. You know, it wasn't blooming freezing. So yeah, um, yeah, I really enjoyed there. Really, um, Japan was a big fan of going to Japan and uh, doing some training over there as well. Um, yeah, I used to love travel. I used to love. I miss that a lot. I do miss it. I miss traveling, racing abroad. Uh, my European juniors were in uh, Dunkirk in France and then Malta the second year. The Maltese one was outside in the red hot sunshine. I swam so well. It was like, you know, it was like the sunshine was like my energy. Do you know what I mean? And it was, um, it was, uh, it was really special. I do miss those times. Kira Smith getting her commemorative bronze medal. She gave them a right good go in the 100 meter breaststroke. A very, very strange race in the end, that wasn't it? Obviously, we had the, the false start from Shimon O'Connor in the build-up to that. And she then 
already knew she was she was out of it, so didn't get anywhere near her best. Sarah Vasey picking up the bronze. This is 50-meter Commonwealth gold medalist. You know what? I'm not sure Siobhan would have won it anyway. I, I, I think Imogen yeah. Clark was too strong. I think she went out fast. She went out powerful. She decided to lead it from the front. I love, I love watching swimmers do that. I mean, it's so exciting when swimmers do come from behind to win that race, but when you see a swimmer go out for it and hold the lead and manage, you know, it's almost like they deserve it more when they go for it. And uh, Imogen Clark deserves this, deserves this praise, deserves this gold medal. Yeah, great swim from Molly Renshaw as well to get the, the silver. You mentioned yeah. she is clearly obviously under some pretty intense training at Loughborough as part of the national setup, but still able to claim a silver medal in this one. And Imogen Clark. With the straight gold medal, not a commemorative gold or anything like that, she won that race, and it was yep. a, it was a superb swim from Imogen. That left field would would be unfair, but it was coming from lane seven in that sort of field. It can be a little bit unexpected, but she let it out from the front, as you mentioned. There was no doubt yep. about it from the moment yeah. she saw the left the blocks. Yeah, she just wanted. To, she just, it's almost like she wanted it the most, I guess. I mean, she just as soon as she dove in, she was like, "I'm having it. This is it. Let's go." And uh, she held on and held off. Uh, Held off Renshaw and held off Vasey. That was a really, really good swim. Yeah, she did, she really did do it so well. And it's almost as if the the girls here are going through a similar thing that the boys did a few years ago, like the, the breaststroke boom. You sort of look at the standard in that final, and it's it's absolutely incredible. And it's similar to when we had, you know, the likes of Petey and uh, and, and Ross Murdoch emerging in in the breaststroke, and all of a sudden you couldn't move for in, incredible British breaststrokers yeah. in the guys. And it seems to be happening with the girls now. Yeah, yeah, the standard has really raised, not just in the men's but in the women's as well. The breaststroke, British breaststroke at the minute is very, very good. Um, it's exciting times for, for for breaststroke. Uh, the women have just proved that as well. Um, you know, we've got Commonwealth gold medals all, all over the place. Um, Jocelyn Juliet swam well uh, last year. I'd like to see her push on a little bit. Um, she was down to be here. I don't know where she is, but that's maybe another story. But no, British breaststroke is, is, is great. I mean, it's fantastic. Um, I think a lot of it's got to do with Adam Peaty. I mean, I've, obviously he's going to get a lot of the praise a lot of the time, but when you see someone of that standard, uh, you know, competing at that top, top level, breaking the world records like he did, it kind of gives everybody else that belief Everyone kind of like thinks, wow, if he can do it, you know, maybe I could do something similar and it just makes everyone a little bit quicker. The thing is with Petey as well is for those who aren't like of a super swimming persuasion, you just see him maybe on a casual sort of level, every Olympics, every World Championship, that sort of thing, get these world records, get these gold medals, it almost becomes the norm. But when he burst on the scene with a world record out of nowhere at the British Championships, that was, I mean, that was an incredible moment. He was so young, the world record seemed untouchable to mere mortals at that stage and since then he's, he's actually something like the 15 quickest times in history it's, it's yeah. a joke yeah it somehow gets underrated i feel it's yeah I'm, well i mean I, I i guess i mean in the swimming circles i don't think it is underrated. no it's, it's just in it's, a sporting it's, general sense it's, it. yeah maybe yeah but it, it, it is i mean some of the times he's done art are literally unbelievable you know it's it's like what the, you know you wouldn't believe it unless you saw it sort of thing um you know we went 57-0 in glasgow broke that world record again and it was just i mean i was there around poolside you know commentating on the race and it was it, it almost doesn't look like he's swimming that quick until he touches the wall and you think oh my word and how far is one by then you think oh wait a minute that was just absolutely outrageous um, and do you know what? I think it, it's a very, very scary time to see Ruben Viz and Elliot Clock, the two Sheffield swimmers, pick up their silver medals. It's ominous as well, the fact that he hasn't, by his standards, had a particularly good year. Obviously, lost the Commonwealth final. Great in the Europeans, but not not another level, which we may have expected. That, I think, bodes pretty ominously for 2019 and 2020. But We'll, uh, we'll very much come to that uh, next year. We can't wait to watch him there. This is uh, Luke Greenbank picking up his gold medal. A return to form for Luke Greenbank. Yeah. I think he'd be very welcome, not just winning the race, because we probably expected him to do that, yeah. but the time was excellent. Yeah, the performance yeah, was sure. great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, Luke's yeah, big smile on his face there. Look at that big, big smile on his face. 151 one is quick as well. You know, this time of the season, it's a very, very quick time. Big personal best time for Luke, which is what he wants, short course. He's, he's, he's a good turner, you know, he's got great turns, he's got great underwater skills. He's just got to transfer that to long course now. You know, it, obviously there's not as many turns, so he can't use that underwater, but he's just got to, he's got to do something. He's got to do something to drop from that 157 down to the 154 marker so he can start competing with those, those, top, those top guys. And it was one of the things that we mentioned a little bit earlier. He threatened to do that for a little while. When he hit those sort of heights so young, 
all of a sudden you, you expect to see that gradual progression. Yep. Well, there's no way you can't, but yep. actually he's just shown that it's, it, you've, got to, you've got to be so, so good to get to that elite level. It's yep. not a given just being elite at 17 to make that next step is so, so difficult. Yeah, and some, some swimmers don't do it. You know, Some swimmers are fantastic as juniors and then just don't seem to break through on that senior level. I mean, it's, it's quite rare. Usually the top seniors are good juniors as well. Um, and sometimes they're not. The Adam Peaties, you know, the Jocelyn Ulliettes and all that sort of stuff where they break through really, really late. Um, but for Luke, he's been such a fantastic junior. And but, but doing serious times when he was a junior as well, 156 yeah. to win world to win the world juniors is really, really quick. Um, you know, that's made that's senior finals. That can make a senior final at a world champs or an Olympics. That could maybe just scrape the final. Um, but we just need to see him push on. We need to see him push on. Um, I don't know whether it's something to do with his technique or whether it's something to do with his training, I'm not sure. Maybe it's a mentality, I'm not 100%. Sure. Maybe it's a combination of all, of everything. But just got to get him down to his 154, 153, so then he'll be competing for medals at top of the Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Here we go then. Our next event is almost ready to go. It's back to the swimming, which we cannot wait for. As uh, we, head, we head back to the uh, pool. Sam Horrocks leading the way in qualification for this one. We can hand you over to our commentator, Jonathan Bell. Thanks, Steve. A bit of a, a break there in the middle of tonight's session. The medal ceremony more or less marking the halfway point of tonight's proceedings. The first day coming to a close rapidly here at Ponds Forge at the Swim England National Winter Championships 2018. But still lots more to come. So many more medals to be decided and a lot of exciting action ahead. This is an event that was run over four days, 12 months ago. They've kept the same schedule. In fact, there's a couple of events where there's more swimmers, but they've uh, moved it into three days. Tomorrow is going to be very busy indeed, but it makes for uh, a lot of exciting swimming. As we get back into the pool, the men's 100 metre butterfly B final, and it is lane four. And the quickest from earlier today, Sam Horrocks of City of Manchester Aquatics, who uh, really is looking bright. Cameron Brooks Clark of City of Sheffield, likewise, next to him in five. Yeah, these two boys are uh, very experienced. You can see on their sheet that they've got uh, a lot of medals between them. I know Sam Horrocks has represented Great Britain at some events. Look like it is Brooks Clark though with 25 to go. And he's just coming towards the rope slightly quicker into the red zone now, and he will be the first to touch it. Looks like here Cameron Brooks Clark, he is as well, but goodness me, it's a lot tighter than I was making out just a hundredth of a second between him and Sam Horrocks. But it is City of Sheffield's Cameron Brooks Clark who reigns supreme in the B final. Freddie Clampett. Well, Plymouth Leander lingers in the top three as well. He more or less was leading the rest of the pool home. Quite a bit of a buffer between the top two and everybody else. But it's Cameron Brooks Clark who outs Sam Horrocks for that first place finish. But a great battle between the two of them. Yeah, Cameron Brooks Clark, good swim. Um, Sam Horrocks out the quickest, but Cameron Brooks coming back the fastest, showing some great strength misses. Cameron Brooks Clark will know he had a bad finish, so that's why it was closer than we thought. He kind of Missed his finish, so he finished really, really short, almost, almost kind of headbutting the wall. He'll, he'll know that. He'll know that. He'll, he'll know that with, him, with himself. His coach will know that. So, maybe something to work on back in the uh, back in the training pool. Um, but a solid swim from Cameron Brooks Clark. It'll be, I think it'd be tough to beat Sam there. I think that's a good little battle uh, to win. Shows resilience, and it shows uh, some real good character. Well, Sheffield have had a double dose of silver so far tonight, but they get the gold there with Cameron Brooks Clark. No representatives from the home team, if you like, in this A final, though. But Joe Litchfield, James Guy, Eduardo Valsecchi, Callum Jarvis, all to come. James Guy swimming the best time of the year by a whole second ahead of fellow Brit Duncan Scott, 51.1 at the FINA Swimming World Cup in Tokyo. And of course, that's where it's from Marie O'Connor. I've got some of her best times of this year as well. I mean, you were praising it just there, James, in the studio, Japan. And uh, certainly, James Guy had a favourable time there a month ago. Yeah, very classy swimmer, James Guy. He always looks big and powerful in the pool. 
makes his body look huge in the water, which you know a lot of the top swimmers do. They look so relaxed but big and powerful at the same time. If you watch James Guy, it almost looks like he's floating across the pool. That beautiful gliding butterfly across the surface. Well, here is Joe Litchfield swimming for uh, Dern Valley. Season's best earlier today of 52.09. In fact, only one swimmer lining up in the pool failed to get the season's best or a PB, and that was James Guy in lane four, the University of Bath. He is certainly the favourite for this, and he can swim a lot faster than what he showed us earlier on in the heats today. And as you can see, just taking his time there ahead of this one, the men's 100 metre butterfly A final. And James Guy making sure that he's not speeding up for anyone. No, he's just taking his time. I mean, because he's in lane four, he comes out last. And, you know, we used to get told, don't rush. You know, it's your, this is your race. Don't, nobody rushes you. The referees don't rush you. The other swimmers don't rush you. You take your time taking your top off, taking your, 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 your headphones off, your trainers off. You don't rush, you're the fastest qualifier, you do what you want. All ten swimmers set then for the men's 100 metre butterfly, a final here in Sheffield on this Friday night under the Ponds Forge lights and it's uh, James Guy looking to uh, get off to the best possible start there, he was more or less match try for stride by Joe Litchfield under the water but the first touch looked like it was James Guy who made that there but there's uh, quite a few up with him James Guy really trying to extend himself out now though and, and drag himself clear going out strong isn't he not messing around at all he's really taking it out fast down the first 50 meters 23.63 he just kind of wants to dominate this race doesn't he I mean he doesn't want to mess about he doesn't want to think about oh, I'll come back quicker than everybody else he just wants to go out fast and you can see he's got these uh, on this butterfly, he's a class above everybody else at the minute. He's a big, powerful, strong swimmer. Well, he's going to be uh, outside the season's best, I think. He's not going to be an awful lot, is it? 56-6. Oh, he's managed to do it by half a second. James Guy with a really strong finish there to secure that time. Fantastic stuff from him and a PB as well in short course swimming for the 100 metre butterfly, brilliant stuff from James Guy then, comfortably taking that one by over 1.2 seconds, Joe Litchfield in second, it was close between him and Thomas Houndle who had to settle for third, those two getting under 52 seconds, but James Guy well clear of 51 and pushing that towards 50 and a half, he takes the 100 metre butterfly final hit, 50.66 for James Guy in the A-final. Yeah, what a swim that was from James Guy. It's short course personal best as well. I know short course isn't commonly swum by, by James Guy, but he's, he's got to be pleased with that. It's a good swim. Yeah, yeah, he looked strong, powerful, in control of the race the whole time. Went out fast as well, didn't he? He just thought, you know what, I'm just going to go for this. Um, be interesting to uh, hear what he says later, but he's... Uh, he just wanted to dominate from the start, and that's what he did. He wanted to go out strong. You know, he's had a bit of a ding dong with Joe Litchfield in the past, so he wanted to go out strong, kind of blow the field away down that first 50. So to, to stamp his authority, saying this is my race. This is what this is. This no one's going to beat me here. And that's important, isn't it? As, as the name swimmer in a race like that, it's what you've got to do. Because if you open yourself up early on, sometimes it's difficult to rein it back in. Yeah, I've seen him race a few times short course this year, and he. he he likes to maybe try different things and pace it in different ways, but this time it was almost like business, wasn't it? It was like, I'm going out fast, I'm going to win this race, and that is it. And that's what he did. It's exactly what he did. Uh, the next race coming up is the women's 50 metre backstroke. This will be over fairly quick. The, the A final could be a, a real, real close one. We'll get to that in a little bit, a little minute. But the B final, again, a chance for our youngsters to really show where they're at. 50 metre backstroke, splash and dash, Underwater so essential in this race. Yeah, got to get a great start. Use them wedges that they have now in the backstroke wedges. Got a great start. Get a great lift out of the water. Work that underwater work. Hit that turn hard. Work that underwater w underwater work again. The start and turns are really really important. Yeah, can't wait to watch it. And uh, the big final for the women's 50 meter backstroke is coming up for you in a minute as we hand you over to Jonathan Bell. Thank you, Steve. The quickest qualifier from this morning, Leah Whitaker, in lane four of Ealing, 13 years of age, 
Managing to register 28 4 8, and of course, in the B finals, you see so many PBs that have been secured from the morning due to the youthful nature of these swimmers, always improving with each and every meet. And for some of them, the first time they'll have been on this stage, and what a platform to be on as well. Leah Whitaker taking this one in a stride. There's going to be a challenge in lane seven from Caitlin Bergen, but Bergen has done it, has she? 28.09, again just waiting for confirmation of lane four there and Leah Whitaker. This is the one that's going to tip the balance in this B final. Jane Brown up there as well, but by a slither. It's a hundredth of a second for Leah Whitaker to topple Caitlin Bergen and take the women's 50 metre backstroke B final. Jane Brown then in third position. Charlotte Evans wasn't too far away either, but some real promising times from those swimmers just nearing the 28 second mark there. Leah Whitaker so close now to breaking that barrier and 0.4 seconds quicker than earlier on today. Over such a short distance, that really is impressive stuff from the 13 year old. Caitlin Bergen as well from Mount Kelly, really impressing in the pool. She's just outside of her personal best, Jane Brown, in third. Yeah, thank you very much Jonathan. So, the, a, the B final's out of the way. The A final should be an absolute cracker. Two ones to watch out for here. Emily Crane and Chloe Golding, who went so close to each other early on. Swam in separate heats, we didn't really know how close they were until the results came out afterwards. This is set up to be a, a lane four and five ding dong. Yeah, there's a big difference between the heats and the final at any competition. So let's see who can step up, let's see who can progress from those heats to the final. Because that's what you want to do as a swimmer, right? You want to swim fast in the heats but you always want to go quicker in the final so let's see who steps up in the final it's gonna be a great little race between these two um and let's see who wins it yeah looking forward to that one indeed that one's coming up very very shortly we're also hoping to speak to james guy very shortly as well the winner of the 100 meter fly and in fact i think i'm hearing he's ready to speak to us now to me which is it. exciting so uh james is uh, is standing by and so if you're james guy and you've won this event what does it mean to you Let's find out. Yeah, let's find <laughs> let's out. Find okay. out. <laughs> let's ask him. Uh, delighted to say James joins us uh, now. James, first of all, congratulations on the swim. How do you feel? Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad time, really. Um, I was out in Tokyo racing at the World Cup Series, so it was faster than that. But for me, short course isn't my main target. It's just kind of training processes, so the time's all right. Short course personal best, though. The best you've ever swum it. So you must be pretty pleased. Yeah, it's faster than a few years ago, but... Um, quite clearly I'm not in the greatest shape in the world but only in, in December so it's good times to come. Yeah James when you stood behind the blocks you can see where your headphones are and he looks really really focused then what are you thinking about? Uh, just kind of about the race really how I'm going to go out work, work the turns work the finish and try and get it exactly right so I can transfer that into long course swimming. Yeah it seemed like you went out really really quick as well did you have any kind of specific tactics? Uh, it's, it's trying to kind of go out as hard as I could and, and hold back and come back fast so for me my 100 fly the main focus is I always come back quick so if I can get out fast with this, the real sprinters then I've got a good chance to beat him on the back end of the race. Now we know you guys are obviously all in really heavy training at the moment what sort of shape do you feel in heading into what's another massive year with the world championship year in 2019? You know, I'm really excited for next year. Um, we're going to altitude training in January, then Australia in February, so get some good work in there. But I'm really excited. We've got a nice break coming up now for Christmas time, so good time to relax for everyone, then back to work and start January. Do you allow yourself to relax over Christmas? And any, any massive plans, or have you got to keep it pretty low-key? No, I mean, for myself, every year I kind of let go a bit on Christmas. It's family time and friends time, so I'll try and uh, eat as much as I can and uh, make Dad pay the bills, so it's always quite nice for him. <laughs> I'm sure it is. James, a big congratulations once again, ladies and gentlemen, James Guy. Well, Timmy, he's obviously really, really pleased with that, and as well he might. And what's interesting, we were talking about this this morning, he really gives it big for Christmas, which is sort of refreshing to see. This is it. I mean, and, and he's quite, an, he, when he does interviews, he's very honest, isn't he? He comes across very honest, very genuine, and he is. And, you know, he's, he's, he's big with his family, I know that. He's very close with his dad and his brothers. Um, so, yeah, he'll go home, I guess, and he'll let his hair down by the sounds of it. You know, what that entails, I'm not sure. But um, it's important to relax. It's important to have that downtime. It's important to kick back, forget about swimming, forget Feel about human, competing. I guess. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's just to refresh the, the brain, the mind, if anything. Um, and that sounds like what he'll do. He sounds like he's quite, I mean, James, when he races, you can see he's quite an intense swimmer, isn't he? He, he, he was focused behind that block. He had his headphones on. He wanted to win. He wanted to go out fast. He had the tactics in his mind. 
So he wants to go out. He want, at Christmas, he wants to go home. He wants to switch off from all that. He wants to forget about tactics and training and all that sort of stuff. He wants to let loose, and why not? Absolutely. And so we see the swimmers making their way out for our next race. This uh, should be a belt. This is women's 50 meter backstroke A final. Emily Crane and Chloe Golding, lanes four and five, the ones to watch in this one. They were brilliant earlier on. 50, 27, 5, 9, I should say, for Emily Crane, and 27, 7, 1 for Chloe Golding. Emily Crane comes in as the favourite. She can go a little bit quicker. Her PB is 27, 24. So it's, it's always tough, isn't it, when, when you know you're the favourite, especially in a race like this where all the swimmers are pretty much the same age, still on that sort of precipice of taking that next step up to senior national level. It's always difficult to manage that expectation. I don't know whether there's a swimmer you think about that too much. I mean, your main focus is, is training, is training hard, and when you come to a competition, is racing your best. And, I, you know, I don't, I don't think she'll think about expectation too much. I mean, she's, what, she's 20 years old now, so, you know, she's wanted, I mean, she wants to push on, doesn't she? Wants to, maybe she? Maybe she got to that age now where she does want to kind of push on, and, and she maybe it's start, that expectation is starting to build on her shoulders. Um, I mean, this. I mean, this for this race right now. She's got a tough one um, against Chloe Golding. Her her, fourth, her first thought would be to beat Chloe and win this 50 meters backstroke um, in a in a personal best time. I mean, it, what is she point three of a second off her personal best? So she should be there or thereabouts. We certainly hope so. This uh, a final is coming to you very very shortly. The swimmers are all out. The uh, the crowd in Ponds Forge is ready, and so too is Jonathan Bell. Certainly am, and uh, looking forward to this one the women's 50 meter backstroke and we'll be sticking with the 50 meter distance as well afterwards with a double dose of men's breaststroke action but eyes all on the women at the moment steve said there emily crane's pb 27 2 4 four hundredths of a second superior to her best this season which she got here in sheffield last month at the uh, Bucks Swimming Championships. But of course the stakes higher for a swim England meet. And she's uh, keen to try and chop seconds off of that time. Good start from her though, and importantly a good turn as well at the halfway point. Yeah, so important this 50 minutes backstroke. You've got to have a great start, you've got to have a great turn. And Emily Crane showing her skills underwater there. And it's going to win her the race, isn't it? That fantastic turn is going to make sure she wins this 50 metres backstroke. 26.94 for Emily Crane. Well, bish bash boss really for Emily Crane there. 26.94. And that is the best British time of the year over the uh, short course format for Emily Crane. The Loughborough University swimmer dipping under 27. Really good time that. Lauren Cox second, Chloe Golding in third. But Emily Crane will be delighted. Yeah, nice one from Lauren Cox, actually. Didn't really expect her to come into that silver medal spot, but she's uh, coached by Adam Rookwood down there at City of Coventry. One of my old uh, teammates and good friends. And he said to keep an eye out for her, actually. I should maybe have mentioned that. He did say, yeah, I spoke to him a few hours ago in between the heats and the final, and he said, uh, I've got someone called Laura Cox. Keep an eye out. I think he said she was fourth fastest going into, the, uh, into this race. So um, nice silver medal for Laura Lauren Cox and uh, the City of Coventry. Yeah, out there in uh, lane three was Lauren Cox, and she will be back on the podium later on in a silver medal capacity. As uh, we now look ahead to the men and the 50 metre breaststroke, B final coming up first. And uh, once again, James, I mean, we've spoken a little bit tonight about when you're a junior, you're the age of 14, and you're competing with people that are 21, 22, 23. How does that feel on a stage like this when it's probably your first time? Um, I, I, I mean, your first thought would be loads of pressure, right? But I, I mean, I don't think it is. I remember being a 14-year-old, I, I didn't really feel the pressure against the seniors. I, I wanted to beat them, and if I didn't, it wasn't the end of the world because they're a lot older and bigger and stronger, more powerful than me, more experienced. So I think for the juniors, it's kind of a carefree, go for it, stay relaxed, do your best, challenge the seniors, and if you beat them, it's a fantastic scalp. Junior record holder for this event, Cameron Williams lines up in late three for Dartmoor Darts, and uh, he's one of those younger swimmers I was just alluding to that at the age of 14, turns 15 in the new year. But uh, out there in lane three, he certainly can give Robert Kelly and Roma Shera in four and five a run for their money, should this race go his way. The men's 50 meter breaststroke up and running. 
And it's uh, the Golden Lane's really there. You'd say Lane 5, Roman Scherer getting the superior start. Yeah, very strong swimming. Very strong start and uh, very f strong first 25 from Roman Shearer. Silver hat of Plymouth Leander. Plymouth always producing powerful sprinters, don't they? It always seems to be the sprinters that come from Plymouth. Well, some cracking swims in there. Roman Shearer, the best of them, though. 28 to 4. That's a, a PB for him. A quarter of a second better than his season's best that he got this morning. And Cameron Williams there. Well, we said he could give Robert Cowley and Co. a run for their money, and he has by a hundredth of a second to get second spot, and that should be enough for a junior goal for him, you would suspect. But of course, we do have the A final to come as well. But Cameron Williams looking very good there indeed in that respect. And his time of 28.62 is an agonising one hundredth of a second away from the PB he got this morning. Yeah, one one hundredth off your personal best. That's yeah. I mean, he might be a little bit disappointed with that. You know, I think at 14 years old, you always want to beat PBs um, at every single competition. But he's had a great swim there. 28.62. Probably going to win the gold as well for the juniors. Absolutely. Well, that PB he got this morning, in fact, was the uh, British record for uh, the juniors he got earlier on today but the seniors coming to the pool now for the a final and again some big names in there who have had a strong year and we'll be looking to uh, finish on a high in sheffield as we just again run through the list james a couple of names jumping out james will be of course fastest from this morning in lane four yeah i mean he's got he's got to be the favorite right he's Commonwealth gold medalist in the two metres breaststroke. European medalist earlier this year. Not really a sprinter, it's not really his thing, I guess, but a uh, very experienced, big, tall, powerful man as well. Training out of, uh, uh, out of uh, Loughborough University as well. Very experienced swimmer now. One of those late bloomers, you didn't really hear much of him in, the, uh, in his late teens or even early 20s. And, He's 25 years old. It just seems over the last over the, over the last couple of years that James Willby's really started to make his move, which is really late in swimming. Yeah, Lawrence Palmer is uh, someone who's always present at these national meets and is so successful as well. British uh, Swimming Championships managing to medal in this event with the silver. That, of course, the long course. Don't forget that this time last year, this event was on course as well as we were gearing up for the Commonwealth Games. It's unbelievable how quickly time has passed from that. But back to the more traditional short course for these National Winter Championships and the men's 50 metre breaststroke A final. James Wilby and Lawrence Palmer's uh, personal bests are remarkably similar to one another. Will be a hundredth of a second better than Lawrence Palmer in terms of the PBs. And uh, at the moment, you see that orange cap bobbing around there of Lawrence Palmer. It looks like he's just got the edge, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, a good swim out down here in lane number three as well. David Murphy's moving really strong, but James Wilby powering home down this back 25 metres, really using that strength to take the gold medal in this 50 metres breaststroke. And a PB as well for James Wilby over the short course format. 26 uh, 26.61 there, the time. It is Murphy who's managed to get second ahead of Lawrence Palmer. I said Palmer in the first 25 got off well, but that turn there from Wilby and Murphy, I don't know if it was a bad turn from Palmer or a good one from those two, but Wilby top overall. Yeah, it did seem like uh, it was Palmer, Wilby and Murphy at the turn, and then just off the turn, it just seemed Wilby and Murphy just seemed to get that little bit of an edge. I'm not sure whether... Lawrence Palmer lost a little bit on that turn. Maybe just a long course from a specialist, so he doesn't have to do that turn, obviously. Um, and maybe, just, maybe it's not something he can take home back to his programme and think, you know what, I need to just have a little crack at my turns a little bit more and maybe do a bit of video analysis and see where he's maybe going wrong. Well, James Wilber then certainly will be uh, happy with that and hopefully we'll hear from him a little bit later on as well. As, uh, next up 
the women come out for the uh, 200 meter butterfly now the B final to start us off with it's a bit of a, a smaller lineup this one to what we've been accustomed to tonight we've got the seven swimmers involved and again another look at some of the talent that uh, is coming up the likes of Mia Leach Melanie Hall Charlotte Robinson Rebecca Twardeklev really could go through the whole field and so all but one of them managing to get a PB this morning it was Melanie Hall of City of Sheffield in lane five who was unable to break her PB of 2.11.65 which is way superior than that, that of anyone else in the pool can she bring that sort of performance here in this B final to win the women's 200 meter butterfly we shall shortly find out It's a good start. It's a pretty even start as well. And the first to rise out of the water indeed is uh, Mia Leach, who got a bronze medal at the British Summer Championships in uh, 2018. Now they're on this year in Sheffield. Yeah, so national age group medalist Mia Leach. Fastest qualifier. Very important thing to go through as a as a swimmer. You know, we've got a I think we've got a pretty decent age group system going on where you know these guys will compete every single year in Sheffield for their age group and they'll, you know, they'll race each other and it's it, it is some great competition you know it's there's a lot of pressure on it as well you know Mia Leach will go there and she'll compete against all the every, all the best swimmers for her age across the country and she's obviously won that bronze medal in the two meters butterfly uh, earlier this year so national medalist she knows what it's like to compete in a final and to compete and win medals so let's see if she can do the same thing here well it's Charlotte Robinson of City of Leeds and uh, also up there as well Melanie Hall in lane five the two of them surrounding Mia Leach and uh, leading ahead of her it's also a strong start on the far side from Lauren Brantley of Camden Swiss Cottage who's got those two lanes vacated to her left hand side of course lane zero eight and nine not in use for this race but certainly putting her form to good use at the moment is Charlotte Robinson in lane three and her and Melanie Hall. The two Yorkshire swimmers going towards the wall on the uh, third quarter there, just separated by 0.85. Yeah, nice to see some of the girls using that underwater work. Still young, so still I've got time to develop those muscles in the legs and in the core to work that underwater work. Well, you could say this is a three, maybe even a four horse race here because you've got Rebecca Twardeklev of Newcastle who's trying to uh, plunge herself up towards the front late on. Melanie Hall is the one leading them home. There's Charlotte Robinson dropping off, which has allowed Mia Leach to get up there as well. But down the middle, it's Melanie Hall who has got the quickest time of 2.13.44. What a finish to that one then, because you had Mia Leach and also Rebecca Twardeklev, two swimmers who were outside the front three 50 meters ago, but they have managed to get up into the top trio. Melanie Hall though wins it for City of Sheffield. It's a season's best for her by half a second, 2.13.44. Merely each second, Rebecca Twardekleb in third. Well, thank you very much, Jonathan. That was a very, very good race. We've seen so many of them here tonight. I think day one of this championship is, is living up to the billing. Sorry, we really we've impressed. We've there we go. Now. Really <laughs> impressed with the. I was just about to say, really impressed with the juniors. Yeah. Um, they've been fantastic, and they weren't disappointing the tuna fly as well. Really great on that final to see some of the girls use that underwater butterfly kick. I was just saying on the commentary, um, they're going to take a bit of time to develop those core muscles, those leg muscles, to really drive that underwater work. We could see them starting to really put, you know, some fly kicks together, maybe five or six off every single turn, which was great to see. Um, we've got some really promising juniors coming through. We have indeed, and speaking of one of our promising juniors, he was, he was this once upon a time, but now one of our star seniors, James Wilby, is standing by to talk to us. So a big well done and a big congratulations to James Wilby, who joins us now. James, huge congratulations, as I say. This time last year was an amazing event for you, qualification for the Commonwealth Games, and I think it's fair to say 2018 has gone pretty well for you. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, it was a bit of a scary time like this time last year because almost missed out on the team, but um, he managed to just scrape in there. And the last year, the last 12 months, sorry, it's just been unbelievable. So um, hopefully looking for more in the future. 
Yeah, well, we've been discussing that you're maybe a little bit of a late bloomer in terms of the swimming world. What do you put that down to? Um, just for me, over the last sort of year and a half, it's uh, the team that you know we've got set up at Loughborough. I think for me, that's been really like fundamental in my in my movement, um, going like moving on in the, the events. Um, it's just all those hitting those key areas, which is something I didn't necessarily think was that important when I was younger. Uh, but uh, now that I'm there, like hitting, working each one, it seems to be coming together nicely. And two events this year on the major international scene, of course, the Commonwealth Games and then the European Championships. Are you now targeting 2019 and that World Championships? Take that next extra step? Yeah, I mean, definitely that's the, the next major international. Um, using that sort of as the next stepping stone towards Tokyo with the, that being the, the long-term goal. So, yeah, things are looking good for that. Uh, the cycle's been pretty good and happy with how the racing's going here uh, in the build-up to that. And how much have you enjoyed this event so far? Obviously, it went under your belt. I know we're going to see you later on this weekend as well. Short course, do you mind it? It's, it's always a challenge um, for me, who's not very good at turns sometimes, but uh, we're working on that. And you know, being forced to do a short course event means you know, I'm forced to work on the turns and do them under pressure. So they're going to be you know, essential come the big internationals, which are long course. So better get started working on them now. Hey, it's only going to help, mate. Congratulations on the win tonight, James Will Be. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. Now, it, very, very happy man, obviously, but it's what I found last year when I did a similar sort of interview when he, when he won the, well, he qualified for the Commonwealth Games, was just how sort of forthright he was and how very self-aware he is as a swimmer. He, he knows he hasn't necessarily achieved what he could have achieved when he was younger, but he's really put himself right in this last two to three years and put himself really on the right track. Yeah, it shows what a skillful swimmer he is as well, because to know what mistakes you're making in training, and then correct it and apply it and become the swimmer that he is, that's, that's something quite special. So that's really difficult to do because as a junior, you learn your trade as you, as you compete, as you train, you learn your skills. And he's kind of just thought, I'm not doing these things right. I need to change it right now. And to do that in your early 20s is, is, is really, really difficult. He's done it. He's done it with ease, it seems, because he's Commonwealth champion, European medalist. And it looks like he's going to go to the World Championships and hopefully do special things as well. Yeah, we certainly hope so. As you mentioned, a bit of, bit of a late bloomer, but it would be a bit of a fairy tale story for James Wilby, who last year was giving absolutely everything, fighting tooth and nail just to qualify to make that Commonwealth Games team. And now it almost seems a shoe in that he's going to be in well, that I world's mean, team. Yeah, I mean, now he's our best tournament at Brescia, isn't it, right? So he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's doing something right. It's like he's gone from an amateur to a pro, isn't it? It sounds like he was being a bit of an amateur, kind of just, I assume it was maybe a bit of a hobby. And then he thought, no, wait a minute, I can do something here. And he just went from amateur to pro in terms of his attitude, his, his application to training, by the sounds of it. And, look, and, and that's what happened. And that's what you need to get to the top, right? I mean, that's what you need to get to the top. You need that kind of mentality if you want to be the best. And James Wilby has it. Well, we move on to what should be an absolutely corking final. This, I know this is one you're really looking forward to. The girls, 200 metre fly. Emily Large and Laura Stevens both posting huge times earlier on, going 207, the pair of them. Winners could come either way. Izzy Grant's very quick. Tori Sop off the conveyor belt down at Wirral Metro. She's very young, but also very quick as well. I'm so excited for this race. Yeah, we've just seen... Have we just seen Emily Large do the uh, 800 as well, right? I'm making that up. I think you are. I'm making it up. Okay, I'm making it up. No, okay, well, I mean, it's, yeah, it should be It should be a close-up. We're both on 207. Um, it's, it, I mean, it's difficult to gauge here because because the, I'm not 100% sure what stage of training. Most swimmers will be in hard training right now. You know, so the difference could be, did some of one have a little sneaky rest before this competition? Did they have a few days where they kind of just eased off the training? So I, 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 that could play a part as well. Um, it's going to be a good head-to-head -head between these two girls. Um, and, we'll, you know, we can see who's going to take it down. Well, over to your race commentator, Jonathan Bell. Thank you, Steve. Ellie Large and Laura Stevens separated this morning. Not by an awful lot. Nine hundredths of a second. So we're at Laura Stevens managed to secure that fourth lane spot Emily Large right next to her though in between the golden ropes and just to the right of them also knocking on the door Izzy Grant of City of Sheffield she's made a decent start she's got a very competitive PB but hasn't really swum close to that this year and 2.11.1 was her time earlier today but I do fancy to break 2.11 in this race Laura Stevens though very smart start but she's got company Yeah, Laura Stevens. She's a multiple medalist, multiple national medalist. It seems in a in a in a few events. Uh, 
again with that gold hat on of Plymouth Leander. Seems like they're having a good meet as well so far and producing. We talked about the sprinters that they're producing. Looks like they've got a 200 meters butterfly specialist here as well. So really good program down south on the coast. Well, you can see Laura Stevens extending that lead with uh, each and every length. And going into the final 50 now, she is the one in control, but there's certainly room for Emily Large and Izzy Grant to bite back, and that's a real battle that for second. It looks like Emily Large is just pulling away, though. It does. It does, and it looks like it's going to be uh, Laura Stevens who's going to take it down. Yeah, there's no way the other two girls come back. I mean, Laura Stevens has paced this really, really well. She's finishing strong, just holding that technique and form and finishing. Well, she smashed a PB as well. She managed to get that here in Sheffield in November at the Books event. And here at the quick. Swim England event, 204.94. Yeah, it's quick, 204.94. I did not expect her to go that quick. We thought around the 207 mark would, be, would, would take it down. She's just gone 204.94 for Laura Stevens. I'd love the camera shot to be on her face right now just to see the reaction because that's quick. Emily Large there has managed to uh, secure the second fastest English time of the year. So, well, those two times there. There the we go. Look at that. There we are. There's the camera shot we're looking for. Look, there. A big smile on her face. Look at there. Yeah, see. 204.94. Yes, Laura, you've just gone that time. Fantastic swim. Punches the water as well. That's what we like to see. Great swim from Laura Stevens. Well, the fastest three times there that we have seen in England this year on the short course circuit. Laura Stevens, Emily Large and Izzy Grant making the top three of the women's 200 metre butterfly. And that was uh, quite a great race with Laura Stevens doing superb there to get under 206 for the first time and then 205 as well. Two birds with one stone for Laura Stevens and she has won that A final. Very warm welcome back to the studio. Another great race, and Laura Stevens continues to impress. She was so impressive this time last year, and it seems to be that she is on the precipice of taking that next big step. And still a young swimmer, still clearly loving her swimming, which is what we like to see, by the way. She's got always got a big smile on her face. Another big win for it's a great time. Yeah, a big shout out to Plymouth Leander Swimming Club as well because um, we always praise the sprinters and we've seen a few of them tonight. And they're not just uh, you know making sprinters, they're making these amazing turns, but me foot fly swimmers it seems as well. No great swim from the young lady. Um, I really wanted to th at the end the camera just to be able to go straight on her face because I knew she'd be really really happy. I mean we thought of, uh, maybe a 207 might win that two minutes before she's just gone 204 and I was like come on put the camera and as soon as the camera went on her you just saw this big beaming smile she hit the water with her goggles that's what we want to see that's what we like um, and it's going to be a great confidence boost for this for this young lady to uh, to, to push on and big time yeah I mean sometimes you just need that sometimes a lot of times you just need that one breakthrough swim okay they just need that that one little swim where they where they they, they, they switch from kind of that junior to the senior and maybe that might be it for Laura. It, you know, it might, might be the time where she thinks, I can compete at the senior levels now. And it's perfect timing with trials just around the corner in April for the World Championships. It could be great, great timing. Could be impeccable. Yeah, you're right. We're currently waiting for some more medal ceremonies, by the way, ladies and gents. So do bear with us. Our medals are going to be presented uh, very shortly for you, uh, starting with the women's 200 meter individual medley. We've still got to come the men's 400 free. That's the next race in the water, as well as the women's 100 free. And I'm, I'm hearing Shavon Maria Connors actually pulled out of that event. Clearly, obviously, not feeling her best. Yeah, I'm not 100% surprised. Um, she's had a bad first day um, she looks tired in the water she looks sluggish in the water um, and it's not like Siobhan I mean Siobhan's you know Siobhan's a, a, a tough competitor she's a tough racer um, maybe she just thinks you know what I'm, I'm not feeling it there's no point in doing any more racing I may as well just take a little bit of time just chill out clear my mind come back tomorrow and uh, and start again well, we obviously wish it all the best our next race of course the men's 400 free now this one is a bit of a stacked one 
Max Litchfield, quickest in qualification. He's a big favourite, but he's got a couple of sort of old heads in there with him as well, in Jay Lelly and Toby Robinson, who've done yep. this race at middle distance so many times that actually they're, they're always going to be a threat because you never know quite where they're going to be at this stage of the season. Yeah, I mean, you don't know where anyone's going to be, but Max this morning looked really strong, didn't he? Yeah. He looked really strong. He went out fast and he came back fast as well, and that kind of sounds obvious. He's medley he... summer, Max Litchfield, obviously. We've seen him at, at world level on, on the medley stage, but clearly he's, he's 400 free. He's still yeah. pretty pretty lethal. Yeah, really strong fit. And I think I used the word resilient this morning, um, which Max is, and his brother is as well, Joe. Um, just very, very hard to beat swimmers. Like, they'll never give up. They'll never steal in them. They, but yeah, this is it. I mean, maybe it is they kind of I mean they pride themselves on that right they pride themselves on that Sheffield Steel image and it shows in the swimming I mean and it, 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 they're hard to beat they grind out the results but they're good quality swimmers as well um, which makes it even tougher to beat them yeah, you can see the flames go up which means it's almost time to present our medals you see Kayla Sanchez looking very happy to be up there Still a bit of a novelty, I'd imagine. It, it won't be for very much longer. She's going to win some medals all yeah. over the place. Oh, Still only 17, though. I know, yeah, yeah, so young. But she's looked so calm and relaxed um, the whole competition. She, you know, she's looked very, very happy to be here. And she's swimming like a happy swimmer as well. Yeah, what was that you said earlier? A bit of a quote, happy swimmer equals a fast swimmer, right? I mean, most of the time, yeah. Most of because <laughs> if a swimmer's swimmer, <laughs> swimmer, swimmer slow, then you'll be, be unhappy. I mean, let's have a little look at Siobhan. You can see Siobhan's face there. I mean, she's not happy at all um, but Siobhan's a tough cookie as well you know she's you know she's got you know she does she, she doesn't look like this mean brutish woman does she but she's but she's a tough tough cookie Siobhan and um, you know she won't let this beat her down too much she'll be back in back in the train now. she's she's a she's a class from her as well Siobhan like she's got great technique she's got great skills so you know she's she'll be back she'll be back to see the big smiles on the faces of those winning junior medals as well. Obviously, a, a big moment for these young swimmers. And, uh, it's Abby Wood who got the uh, the gold in this one. Another one who's at, at Loughborough in the national in the national program there, and a very very dangerous swimmer as well. Abby Wood almost flies under the radar a little bit, but mm. still young and is a medley swimmer that, with that sort of ability to challenge, you know, world's well oyster at that stage. Yeah, for sure, yeah. I mean, and, and, and I'm best luck to her because she's got it tough, you know, with, with Siobhan when she's firing. You know, she's, I mean, with, uh, we've had uh, uh, Siobhan winning the gold, the, the, the silver, sorry, at, at Rio, winning medals at Europeans, Commonwealth Games. You know, we had Hannah Miley, great medley swimmer as well, maybe just, you know, bowing out at, at, at this point, but, you know, she's got she's got she's got great history. We've got a great history of medicine, especially over the last you know five, six, seven, eight years. So she's uh, she's got you know she's got some good history behind her in terms of uh, what Britain have, uh, have, uh, have produced. So she can push on and maybe challenge. The, the, the thing for her is to challenge Siobhan. She's really got to try and challenge Siobhan. Um, did it pretty well tonight. Yeah, she did do well tonight. Yeah, I mean she can only do what she did tonight. Yeah. I mean the, the 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 classy Canadian, you know, looked looked fantastic. I mean she, there was the only one winner there. Um, but she can push on now. You've got that confidence now to go back to training and work hard and and, uh, and come to trials with, with with that with that hunger, you know, with that hunger. I mean, that's the proof in the pudding, isn't it? Once we get into 2019 and sort of January, February, as a swimmer, is brutal, ruthless, yeah. constant training yeah. in a build-up to the springtime when you start trialing, and then obviously yeah. later on in the year going to going to the big international events. And yeah. when we talk about these big international events, and the, the top swimmers won't worry too much about trials. They're, they'll just want to have enough in the tank to qualify. Worry about peaking later on in the year. That's a luxury yeah. they have. But actually, for the ones below that, they don't have that luxury. They've got no. to try and throw everything at trials. No, I mean to be fair, most of the tops must throw everything at trials. I mean, maybe, maybe the James guys. And the, I'm talking and the, the very, very top. Yeah, yeah, they might. They might. I mean, I think they'll taper for it. I think they'll taper and they'll think they'll try and perform their best at the trials. Um, because you've got to make sure as well. I mean, you know, we've seen Siobhan, you know, make a couple of mistakes today, and she's one of the best medley swimmers of all time, not just in this country, in the world. So, you know, it, 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 you've, you've got to go to trials, you've got to put the, you've got, you've got to go for it. I mean, I mean, there might be a couple that might, you know, kind of relax and maybe, you know, take it easy in certain spots. But it's a, it's a great challenge, it's a great chance for some of those, for some of those youngsters to go to trials. And to compete here and win medals like this and, and do the time that some of these guys are doing, to, to bounce off that and to trampoline off that into trials is, is a great platform. 
can see what it means to the youngster next to James Guy as well. He doesn't quite know where to look. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good little idea, this. I think it's, uh, you know, his mum will take a picture, you know, Swim England will take a picture and he'll, he'll get it emailed or whatever to him and, and put that on his wall and remember that. There's your Facebook profile picture there for you the go. next that's few weeks. Your, that's it. There's your Instagram right there. <laughs> get a few extra followers for that. Absolutely. Big smile on the faces of the yeah. two men there. Yeah. Well, the, the, the man and the boy <laughs> looking very, very young up there, the junior winner. Similar height though, right? Yeah, <laughs> always got the height, always got the These height. youngsters are like six foot two, don't very call, jealous. Don't say jealous, mate, you're taller than I am. Uh, anyway, we're going to see the medalists for the uh, for the women's 50 in just a minute as well. But to, So we go back to the point where we, we talk about the trials, because that's obviously the, the biggest next focus for, for these guys. The national championships is great, but it is a short course event. It's, it's more about gearing up. When you have that attitude as you head into a trials and you know it's a world championship year, the year before an Olympics as well, you know how big that mm. is, how do you try and approach that? Do you approach trials as if it were a world championship? Is that the level of sort of severeness you have to give it? Um, I mean, it's hard. You're supposed to, I guess. You're supposed to, but you don't in your own mind because the world champs and Olympics is something different. Like there's, there's different kind of pressures. Um, if, you, if you've never been, I'm talking about, though. Yeah, you've. I mean, if you've never been, you've just. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying I know to you're my, very lucky to go to a few. <laughs> I mean, I was really lucky because I had some great teammates and I had some great training partners with Adrian Turner, Stephen Parry, Graham Smith, you know, Steve Parry Olympic bronze, Graham Smith Olympic bronze. So I'd trained with these guys who had done it before, who'd been there before. So I kind of, I, I kind of could get the vibe and the hunger off those guys and understand what it was about. For somebody who's maybe not got those kind of training partners, I'm not 100% sure how they would feel. I think they've just got to train hard, okay? Get the fundamentals right. And it's just another competition at the end of the day. When you go to a, a trials or an Olympic, you don't change, you don't eat something different, you don't go to bed at a different time, you don't have a different breakfast, you know, you don't go for a 10 mile run before, you know, you don't, you don't do anything different, okay? So you, it's just another competition. So I think a lot of them, if there's any kind of advice I'd give to them, it's just another competition. Do what you normally do, train, train hard, work hard, and get some competition. Do what you normally do. Don't change anything too drastic. It's an interesting little bit of advice. Because as someone who went to three Olympics, I mean, you know what you're talking about in, in that sense. And trials is something the guys are going to be hugely amped up for. Such a big one coming up in about March, April time, I think, yes. next year. Which is, I mean, we're all looking forward to it. Just to, it almost sets the scene for an international year, doesn't it? I'm really looking forward to that. And we always, no matter what year it is, we always see two or three emerge from seemingly nowhere as the next ones who yeah. break into the bottom level of the squad and they're there and they get to go to their first championships. And yeah. from there, you, you just never know, do you? That's it, yeah. We see our medalist sip for our next this women's 50 meter backstroke. Real splash and dash. This one, the 50 backstroke, it was a really good race as well. So Emily Craner got over the line in the end in the A final. Very well she swam too. We sort of built that one up as a little bit of a, a bit of a shootout, but in the end it was a really, considering it was a 50, a commanding performance. Well, again, this is it. You, you, you don't know how easy some of them are going in the heats. You know, we saw some people with puffed out faces, didn't we? And then some people that kind of look really relaxed. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of tactics to be played, um, especially in a short course event like this. But there's a lot of them be taking it easy in the heat. It's just kind of, you know, keeping the cards close to the, you know, close to the chest. They don't want to give too much away. And then when they get in the final, they can express what they've got. There's an interesting one, actually, with Emily Crane, because we're stationed up in our studio, quite close to where the, the Loughborough contingents are. And when they saw her touching and saw the time, quite a few of them craning their necks through from the little hub they get themselves under the stand here where the music goes yeah. and they do all their land training. And quite a few of them craning through and going, oh, look what Emily's just done. That was, yeah. that was how good a swim that was. They got the sort of the mutual respect of the teammates. They knew how big a swim it was. Yeah, they've got a really good team spirit here, actually. Um, we, like you said, we can hear the music. They've got their Christmas songs going on today while they, they were did. doing the stretching and the mobility. Um, some of them were doing some med ball slams and some squats and they've got the tunes playing. They've got a nice little atmosphere back there um, yeah. and you can see that when they swim as well. And it's great, it's great to see, it's great to see, it's really important. Swimming, I guess, is an individual sport when you're behind the blocks, when you're in your lane, you're by yourself, you know. I, but it's such a team sport, you need your teammates behind you. It's so, so important to give you that extra kind of boost, to give you that extra kind of lift in training, in competition. I had some fantastic teammates and coaches, I was so, so lucky. Um, and it seems like the Loughborough guys have got that same thing. Well, here come the medalists for the men's 50 breaststroke. 
it was really interesting, wasn't it, to speak to James Warby a little bit earlier on. He's wearing his GB gear. You know, this is the things he can do now. He can come to these nationals with his GB gear on. He's earned that right. Yep. And I, I know for a fact, just from knowing you personally, that that, that never really goes away. Once you've got your sort of your <laughs> national stash. You see me with my GB bag already. It's exactly. Like, but that's a, it's because it, we get hundreds of them. We're like, we don't know what, we don't know what else to do with them. We have to use them. But is it almost like a bit of a medal of honour? Yeah, I mean the Olympic one's the big one. I mean, it's for, for Worlds and for Commonwealth Games, it, it kind of gets put to that. But the Olympic one, you kind of, you know, that's kind that's kind of your medal of honour. You know, Olympic tracksuit top for me was my my medal of honour. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't walk around with it in here or out about, but you know, it's it's not live, eh? <laughs> <laughs> gets me in VIPs walking around. With the yeah, I don't think so. No, it's no, it's no, it's it's. I mean, it's what these guys swim for, right? It's what these guys train for, you know, to, to represent the country. It's and we never know either. These two here could well be the the present and indeed the future of, uh, of yeah. breaststroke swimming in this country. Hopefully. Cameron Williams on the right, still just 14, yeah, that's crazy. breaking British age group records left, right, and centre at 14. We've talked about how difficult it is. It's, it's no guarantee being that good at that age, but I mean, it, it can only bode well. It's not a bad sign, is it? No, it's not a bad sign. It's it, it, he's just he's just got to keep his head straight. He's got to keep his head straight. He's got to focus on his technique, focus on his training. I keep, I keep saying training a million times, but it is, it is so, so important. It's what a lot of people don't see. They don't see the behind the scenes of the grueling, battling, you know, blood, sweat and tears. And it is blood, sweat and tears most of the time um, in, in training. And this the young man can focus on that and, and, and keep his head together. He's got, a really, he's got a really lovely set down at Dartmoor Darts, actually. I remember speaking yeah. to, to him and his coach, who I believe from memory is his uncle, I think. Right. But uh, it's, it's, either way, it's a family affair for certain down there. Really small setup at Dartmoor Darts. Only got a few swimmers who, who make the national level. But yep. from a small team perspective, getting him doing British age group records, they're all going absolutely crazy up there. Yeah, it's a great promotion for the club. Um, the coaches are doing something right. He must be doing something right. Because, I mean... It's, to break a British age group record, it's not a fluke. I mean, you've got you've got to have some skills. You look you've at people who've got them. Like, yeah, th yeah, they're all big names. All yeah, they always. are. Yeah, you've got to have some skills. You've got to have some. You've got to have some quality about you. You've got to have the, the right training program. You know, you can't just rock up a few times a week and just do a little splash in the pool with you know with your breaststroke. You've got to have a, 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 a structure in the program, a structure in the gym. Um, and those guys are doing it well down there. They are indeed. Sweet. Look ahead now to the racing. We're back in the pool. As, uh, the swimmers are looking just about ready for our next race as we move on to the men's 400 metres freestyle. We start as ever with the B final, which is on its way for you momentarily. A final has some really, really good swimmers in it. That one. It's going to be the turn of some of the youngsters and indeed some of the older heads as well. Plenty of talent in this one, make no mistake about that. And uh, to talk you through it uh, and give you all the information you could ever possibly need is our race commentator, Jonathan Bell. Well, thank you, Stephen. As we get ready for this 400 metre freestyle. And uh, again, plethora of personal bests from this morning, including that of the fastest two William Riley in lane four for University of Bath and Carl Chisholm on Stockport Metro in lane five and I'm sure James will be as uh, impartial as ever for this one. <laughs> yeah, I've, I mean, I've always got to pick up my home club, come on. They've given me so much over the years. It's nice to see, uh, sure, well, I mean, Carl would have been a bit disappointed to be in the B final here, I'm sure he would have, but it was so close. It's 350.19 and the slowest into the... Uh, into the final was 349.60, so just half a second missing out on that A final for Kyle Chisholm. Actually, the fastest qualifier, William Riley, was uh, four one hundredths off making that A final, so he'll be maybe even more disappointed. Well, the best time uh, swam by an English swimmer this year. It was in October in Manchester by Jay Lelliot, who we'll see in the A final just after this. That was a time of 3.43.44. And uh, I think whoever wins this will be quite a bit outside of that. But I mean, what we can see here is all the swimmers keeping up pretty close to one another and really pushing each other on at this stage. Yes, yeah, early days. 150 metres at this turn. 
and uh, quite from the best 400 freestylers, they'll almost even split this race. So the first 200 metres and the last 200 metres will almost be the same time. Some of them even go quicker down the back 200. It's, it's really, really crazy. Um, so it's early days. Let's see if anyone's got anything left in the tank. Cameron killed in the way at the moment. He does specialise more in the 200 free. And uh, this time last year, he managed to get gold at the Swim England Winter Nationals of 2017. As well as uh, the bronze in the summer of uh, 2017 as well. This year, he's gone up into well, an international scene. And, uh, well, really stretching his authority, leaving the fastest two coming into this trailing in his path lane two as well Max Murphy of uh, Loughborough really keeping himself up there as well in, in the top three or four Cameron Curl experienced swimmer technically you can see very nice freestyle got that long reaching almost limp in his stroke you see a few swimmers with that limp instead of the stroke being one two one two it's one two one, two. Is it's a little bit like when, that. when a swimmer's got one arm stronger than the other? Um, I mean, not always. Um, it, you can generate a little bit more power in that sort of format, in, in that sort of uh, it, with that timing, and you can get really strong on one side as well. If you if you if you if you just do that limpy stroke, you, you've got to breathe one in two really. It means you get more oxygen in the system, but it also means you can get really strong and powerful on one side. Um, and it. it, it I think uh, I've had a little look, it's anything over a 400, it doesn't work as well because it's quite a tiring thing to do, it's quite a powerful, explosive drive in the stroke and for anything over 400 it, it can be too taxing, so you don't really see the 1500 swimmers doing it that much, it's more the 200, 100, 200, 400 swimmers. Well, problems, but the ultimate turn uh, being made there by Cameron Curl and this has been almost a procession now coming to the uh, final 25, there's a bit of a burst coming from Carl Chisholm of Stockport Metro, he's unceremoniously disposing of William Riley next to him. So it looks like they'll be our top three, and in that order as well, they're quite evenly spread apart with a dominant display from Cameron Curl leading things home, 344, 3-4. That's a very good time as well. That's the second fastest English time of the year, and it's significantly better then his PB as well by bang on three seconds. Yeah, yeah, big swim, big swim from Cameron Curl. Led from start to finish. Very classy freestyler. Makes it look easy. Cal Chisholm coming in second as well though. He's just come 3:46, and I'm just looking on poor side. I can see the uh, my old coach, his now coach, excited about that time. So he'll be pleased with that. So it's, nice. it's good to see, it's good to see the swimmers from the heats to the finals going a lot, lot quicker. Uh, and it's not, you know, they've not had a massive amount of rest in between the heats and the finals either. So it's 400, a tough, tough event, a bit more of a distance event. It's uh, tough to go quicker in the final, but these boys have done it easily. Well, it's going to be far from easy this uh, next final, the A final of this men's 400 metre freestyle and again you're always going to look at the fastest two lanes from this morning we've got Jay Elliott in lane five who has recorded the best time this year in England for this short course event but this morning quite a bit off the pace in terms of what he's usually capable of doing Max Lickville on the other hand he's coming in with a PB yeah so the form slightly with Max Litchfield uh, with it being this time of the season and all the swimmers will be in tough, tough training. I, was, I mean, I was just having a chat with Stephen uh, on the BBC and it was, uh, we're just talking about, we, don't, we don't know who's rested for this meet. You know, perhaps some of them have had a couple of days rest, maybe some of them have just done weights, you know, today. You know, you mean, uh, some, some of them probably will have done that. Some of the swimmers will have gone in the gym today and done a, a gym session. You know, but some of them might have had a few days rest, which you know makes a big, big difference. It just, it's, you know, it's, even just two or three days rest can uh, make a big, big impact in your racing. A good response from the home crowd there for uh, Jay Elliott of City of Sheffield trying to do the Steel City proud, but Max Lichfield will try and stand in his way. The Durham Valley swimmer lining up. And as we mentioned, coming uh, into this on the back of the 3.42.29 PB he got earlier today. It's 
Strong time then from Litchfield this morning. Can Lelliot respond or will the competition come from elsewhere in the pool? This is the men's 400 metre freestyle A final. Two Sheffield locals doing battle then, Litchfield and Lelliot here. And it certainly is the former Litchfield who has got off to the uh, slightly better start there. Yeah, we saw Max Litchfield this morning go out like an absolute machine. Um, I was really impressed with his heat swim because he just didn't back off. He wanted to go for it. You know, a lot of these top swimmers all play a bit more tactical role and uh, ease their way into the final, but we didn't see Max do that at all. It was almost like he was smashing it for a training swim, you know, to get that pain, to get that hurt, to understand what it feels like, to feel that burn in his body. And he's doing exactly the same thing tonight as well, by the looks of it. And quite a few of these swimmers are 20 or above, a couple up below them, and that's some exciting ones in there as well, actually. Nathan Hughes in particular, lane nine from Hatfield on the long course. He is so strong at the longer distances, specialising more in the 800 and the 1500, but he certainly can come to life over this distance as well. And you've got the Bath University duo of Luke Turley in one and Kieran Bird in two as well, who uh, certainly will be fancying themselves against one another to, to maybe be outsiders. Also have the uh, invitational Irish swimmer Jack McMillan from Banger in lane six. but. As you were alluding to, James, it's uh, more or less a carbon copy, this, from Max Litchfield. So strong so far. He's a very classy swimmer, great medley swimmer as well. So, you know, he's got fantastic four strokes. British record for the 200 IM long course. A superb freestyle. It's such a, his freestyle just looks so streamlined. It looks so narrow, his stroke, but he cuts through the water so well. See, nothing comes out out of the shoulder width. Everything stays within a, that tiny little arrow through the water. You know, maybe not technically the most gifted freestyle. You know, look at this, this was like James Guy. Technically a superb, I mean, Max has got, has got a, has got a really great freestyle, but he just cuts through the water so well. And I used the word resilient this morning. That's exactly what Max Litchfield is. A resilient swimmer. He just wants to go out hard, go out tough and hold off the rest of these guys, and he, there's, there's no way he'll let them pass. Well, he's the only one going solo at the moment, Max Litchfield. You look at the rest of the pool, and everyone seems to be in little packs, which uh, I think maybe is a bit, bit more favourable over a longer distance. You feel like you've got a marker there to go alongside, but it won't be long before Jay Lelliot in five, Jack McMillan in six, and also just on the periphery in seven, Tom Derbyshire will be wanting to escape from uh, one another's clutches. But Max Litchfield, I mean, there's no sign of letting up here. You look at the strength for the kicks as well, and I mean, maybe uh, just as we're coming towards the wall there, of course, easing up, but they are on the whole strong. Yeah, a little bit of a bad turn there from Max. He took an extra big breath, and you could see it really slowed him down. He's been too worried about that right now. Got that nice dive turn into the wall as he approaches. He drops that head, tucks the chest, presses the chest down into the water. So it's almost like a start and turn a little bit early, and that's something that I try and coach any kind of kids that I coach I, I try and show them this dive turn that the, the top athletes doing it's a, it makes it a little bit quicker around the wall and what a scintillating pursuit for silver we've got here in five and six Lelliot uh, McMillan of course uh, McMillan in the uh, banger swimmer he would uh, have a commemorative medal to his name rather than a senior one Max Very Litchfield quick. certainly will have a senior one and it'll be a gold one 338 one three is the time and another significant personal best for him and that is by far and away the best time an english swimmer or indeed a british swimmer has swam at the short course format this year that is superb you look at the distance between him and the likes of mcmillan and lelliot and he well he'll be delighted and i don't think he could quite believe it yeah he's got a kind of a confused look on his face hasn't he like uh i'm not sure what to make of it but you know i He's got to be pleased with that, hasn't he? He's got to be pleased. 338.1, that's that's quick, that's moving. Love the way he races as well. He goes out for it, gets out there, dominates the race. 
probably like the way he swims. Well, it's within two seconds of uh, James Guy's British record that was set back in 2014. So it's uh, very impressive stuff from him. And now we're on to the much shorter distances and back to the women with the 100 metre freestyle. And there has been a, a bit of a rejig here. As Steve said earlier, Siobhan Marie O'Connor coming in the A final has pulled out. We understand its medical reasons. She has, uh, of course, swam twice already tonight. Uh, not the most enthralling evening for her, but she will be replaced in that final by Jemima Hall, who was the second fastest going into this final. However, the actual fastest is Anna Henderson, and because she's a Canadian swimmer and there were already two foreign swimmers in the A final, she is not allowed to compete in that A final and instead will be in this B event. And I have to say, Hannah Henderson is probably the favourite for this. Whenever there's an Ontario swimmer involved, you, you struggle to look past them. Yeah, they've got a strong squad over here, haven't they? It's, uh, it's going to be tough to see any other kind of winner. Let's find out. So, no lane three. As Jemima Hall will be taking part now in the A final, but the other nine swimmers present and correct for this women's 100 metre freestyle B final. Yeah, just looking at the times, it could be pretty tight between few lanes there's a few girls on 55 points maybe three or four girls who could be around the 55 marker so it could make for an exciting race see down this first 50 meters nothing much splitting means four five and six at the moment 0.2 of a second just splitting top three swimmers 0.4 of a second splitting the top four half a split second splitting the top five so Close race so far, 25 to go. Yeah, these swimmers uh, spanning from the ages of 14 up to 19, so relatively close together compared to some of the other B finals we've had tonight. And the swimmers in lane 0 to 5 all having personal best from the morning session. And the best of them was Hannah Henderson and is again as well. She improves with a time of 55.03. Second spot for Amy Grant of Loughborough and in third, Emily Peck. And also we're up there as well, Athena Clayson and Mount Kelly. So we'll wait and find out after the A final if they will be back for a junior, senior or commemorative medal in the next presentation. But the women's 100 metre freestyle B final taken by Hannah Henderson and uh, no real surprise when you look at the form book. The HPC from Ontario, Canada have brought a really strong squad over here to compete. I was just having a little chat before about teams traveling abroad. It's um, it's exciting, it's exciting. I mean, I, I really miss traveling. I miss going away, I miss racing and training in different countries, whether they be hot or cold. I love racing against the Japanese, the Americans, the Canadians, whoever it might be, I used to love it. And I'm sure, and you can see on the faces of these Canadians as well, they, they love being here, they love racing, and it looks like they love winning as well at the minute. Do you get that sense when you're at a venue, and for example, let's say you're doing the walk-on now, that you are abroad, you are somewhere a little bit different, and yeah. that special feeling in the air almost? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, 100%, yeah, 100%. It's very different, I mean, they're, they're, the vibe that they have and the way the format of their competitions will be different to ours, you know, it, there's some similarities, obviously. But no, no, coming here and, and, and competing and, and, and walking out behind the blocks here will feel definitely foreign. It'll feel like something different and something exciting. And, you know, this is what these guys live for. They live for competing against other people across the world as something that they love doing. Yeah, it's fantastic as ever to have the uh, invitations coming here. So far we've had uh, Ireland and Canada, of course, we've mentioned as well. And as we see Jemima Hall there, she was meant to be in the B final. She's now in the A final. Do you think that gives you an extra sense of adrenaline that you're now pitting your wits against the fastest or that maybe it confuses things a wee bit? Uh, no, I mean, everyone wants to be in the A final. I think she'll be, um, I think she's just got to take this opportunity to uh, to step up and uh, hit this under three hard. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's where, where she wants to be. The time earlier on today was at 55.95 and uh, wasn't too far away from that. The second slowest in this final, Katie Latham on the outer lane in lane nine. I mean, it'll be an interesting one, won't it? Jemima Hall, you know, slowest on paper from this morning, but she's going to be in one of the 
more central lanes in, in lane two rather than the outer. Yeah, it's um, it could be. I mean, I mean, it could be really tricky for her in that lane two. She's took Siobhan's place, hasn't she? And it's uh, she could have it really, really tough in that in that lane two. If she doesn't, if she's not careful, she could get some serious waves from either side of it. If she doesn't, she needs to get a good start for sure. She needs to get a good start. I would hit that 25, first 25, pretty strong. Stay relaxed, but hit that first 25 strong so she's not behind on that first turn. On the way then with the women's 100 metre freestyle A final. And two Canadian swimmers taking part in this. Kayla Sanchez back in the pool in lane four. And a first look in lane six at Penelope Alexiak, also of uh, Ontario. And because those two are competing, it meant that Hannah Henderson couldn't be the replacement for Siobhan Marie O'Connor in this final. Rules are rules. Henderson nevertheless taking the B final. And we're waiting to see if she can uh, get up there for a commemorative medal. That, of course, depends on the times recorded in this one. Yes, Kayla Sanchez from Ontario, Canada. Really classy swimmer. Got lovely turns. Look at this on the turn here. They turn together. And look at this now, half a body length ahead. Really classy swimmer. She won that 200 metres individual medley with ease as well. She's going to win this 100 freestyle. Well, a fantastic swim from Kayla Sanchez then. 51.45 and a half a second, more than half a second inside the personal best. Slap bang 52 for Anna Hopkin. Not far away at all from breaking that barrier, but she'll have to uh, do that another day. Penelope Alexiak of Canada also up there as well. Mary Wattle may have done enough for a medal out of the English swimmers, but it's uh, Kayla Sanchez's face that we see once again. And uh, as you were mentioning, James, it is those turns, certainly over a short course that are the margins in this. Yeah, she's a really classic woman. She's, she's happy as well, look. I mean, she, every time she, before the race, I've noticed she's really smiling and happy and after the race, I mean, when you're swimming well and you're doing best times, of course you're going to be a happy swimmer. But, you know, she came in, she looked like she's coming relaxed, um, in form, in a positive attitude. Um, and it, you know she's and she's smashing it. I mean she's smashing. Fifty-one four is quick. It's quick. Well, that's the last of the individual women's races for the night. There will be relays that will uh, end the evening's proceedings. But next, the men and the uh, one hundred meter individual medley. And I have to say this is an event that I'm seeing myself in person for the first time. Talk us through it, James. It's not much time, is there, to stamp your authority if you've got a favoured stroke? It's not. It's one of my favourite events, actually. Um, I do hold the British record. I like to big myself up every now and again. It is my British record still. Um, so hopefully we won't see it at the Joe Litchfields or the James Browns in the next final. Beat it. But it's um, it's a great event. It's a fun event. It's something different. Like you say, it doesn't happen very often. Um, you know, it's obviously a specialist thing for short course. Um, it's just something you can show off your speed on all the four strokes. And it's about, it is about just getting to the wall, but quick on each stroke. I mean, on the 200 IM, you can, on the fly, you can think about long, strong, relaxed strokes. But on the fly here, you can open up a little bit and you can, you know, you can force that stroke a little bit more. On, the, on that fly to back turn, hit that underwater really strong. Make sure you get to 15 meters underwater. Keep that stroke rate high on the back stroke. On that breast, back stroke to breast stroke turn, you've got to be quick around the wall. You've got to be, if you can do that flip turn, do it. Big, powerful breast stroke pull out. Keep your rates nice and strong and high on breaststroke. Don't let it slip. Turn on and get some good fly kicks on that frame. Power home on the freestyle. Well, these nine swimmers coming into this one in good form as well. All of them getting PBs apart from James Watson in lane two. He got a season's best though. Wasn't too far away from getting a PB. It's great to see, right? It's great to see. I mean, everyone's, everyone seems to be doing PBs. Everyone seems to be doing season bests. And it's, uh, it's good timing right before Christmas. Certainly is, and uh, good timing being made on that turn there. Fantastic extension in lane three from Alexandra Bagazzi of Loughborough University. He spent probably just as much time in the pool there underwater than he did actually doing the stroke, and that has now put him in front. Yeah, nice back underwater fly, uh, fly kick on his back shot. Back shot to breast up turn was very, very iffy. I mean, I'd love to have a, and a half an hour, an hour with him on that back stroke to breast stroke turn. But Really great on the Not as strong as breaststroke though. Good breaststroke leg coming out of lane two. James Watson from Crew. There's an awful lot of jostling towards the front as the freestyle comes in now. And James Woodward of Hatfield is trying to really assert his dominance for the first time in this race. 
But he's just been picked out to it, and it was James Watson who had that strong penultimate length for Crew, who has held on at the end. 56 08 the time for him. It's Alexandra Bagazzi of Loughborough University in second, and James Woodward has to ultimately settle for third. Could have been any of the three, couldn't it, for that first touch of the wall? Yeah. Um, who did we have as the winner? I'm sure. I'm not sure about this. Uh, we've got a different score up on. The, we've got Ben. Uh, we've got Ben Harrison as the winner up on the big scoreboard there. He was the one I thought won in the uh, in that pinky purple hat. He looked like he touched the wall first to me. Um, we've got a couple of different things going on. We've got Ben Harrison here maybe now as the official results. Hmm. Interesting. There's been a quick revision. It seems of the stopwatches and James Watson has been uh, given the nod there for that one. Very, very close to call, no doubt about that. The top five all under 57 <laughs> seconds. And now we move on to the A final, and it's the last individual race of the night. And uh, well, we're seeing Yuri Casil and Joe Litchfield lock horns once again in the pool for this. Quite a few uh, PBs and season's best being recorded from the uh, morning session. Sam Horrocks in lane two of City Manchester Aquatics, the only one unable to achieve either of those feats. Reminder, this is the first night of action here at Ponch Falls, the Swim England National Winter Championships 2018. Thank you very much for joining us, wherever you're watching tonight. On the BBC Red Button and the BBC Sport website. It's been uh, some fantastic action on show and arguably still the best to come. As uh, Yuri Casil comes out, quite a distinguishable figure. We have the A final, then we have the two relays afterwards. It is a fantastic way to finish Friday night in Sheffield. And what a tasty proposition we've got here with the men's 100 metre individual medley. A final coming up shortly. Such a fun race. Such a fun race. I think Joe Litchfield's going to be the one to beat. We've just seen his brother, Max, smashing that four and a three. Let's see if the... Uh the second brother can bring home another gold medal. Well, I said Sam Horrocks was the only one to get neither a PB or a season's best earlier, but it's because his PB is just so good. It's the fastest English time of the year, 54.59, he recorded in Manchester at the Swim England Northwest Regional Winter Championships a month ago. And already he's getting off to a decent start. And we also look towards lane six as well. And Brian O'Sullivan coming towards the halfway point. Yeah, Sam Howick's going out fast. We know he's got a good butterfly, Sam. So we expect him to be at the front of the pack, maybe after the backstroke. Let's see uh, how he is on the breaststroke. He must have four pretty good strokes if he's going 54 point. Joe Litchfield's starting to make a move. Joe's got a good breaststroke. So he should be there or thereabouts. But it is just Sam Horrocks, I think, still. It's going to be tight on this freestyle. Really is. You can see the three to his left trying to get involved. Also a late pursuit from Yuri Casil, but it may be too little, too late in that respect. To the wall they come then, and Sam Horrocks has done it. 53-55. And he saved his PB for the evening session. And a great time it is as well. It's the second fastest British time of the year, the fastest English one, 53.55. Joe Litchfield in second spot, and James Brown not far behind in third at all. Him and Brian O'Sullivan, the two Loughborough University swimmers, separated by just six hundredths of a second for that pursuit for the podium. Cracking race. We've still got a couple more to come in the form of the relays, but Sam Horrocks of City of Manchester Aquatics is your winner in the men's 100 metre individual medley A final. Well, thank you very much, Jonathan. It's been a great night of individual swimming, hasn't it? Ending in uh, 
well, in the James Goddard races, I've come to know it in my own head, <laughs> you, your record has stood, <laughs> so we can stood. breathe again. Yeah, we can breathe easy. Yeah, yeah, good. yeah. No, they were, they were never getting that. Hit. <laughs> <laughs> It was a good swim, though, from Joe Litchfield, right? He, he, he did well just to get close to that because without inflating the old ego, it's well, a very, very tough Well, since Sam Horrocks beat him as well, you know. Well, he might have, yes, <laughs> I think even Sam swam even better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sam swam even better, but yeah, Joe yes. and Sam. Sam going within a second and a half, I think. So it's, it's a pretty yeah. good standard to set. Again, this yeah. sort of time of year, it's great to see. Yeah, personal best time from Sam as well. Uh, took out strong. I mean, he's, he's a really good butterfly uh, swimmer. He's a big, powerful, muscular, strong guy. So I think hit for him to take it out quick down the first 50 metres is just natural for him, you know, he's not a back-end swimmer, so went out really strong on the flying, uh, on the flying backstroke. Good breaststroke as well, good turn, good underwater from Sam, and held off Joe, which which is quite tough to do, but I was impressed with Sam's swim. Yeah, not an easy thing to do at all, is to hold off a Litchfield in this pool in Sheffield. Yes, yes, now, two relays coming up for you now, and this is where we can start to have, it's already been a fun event, but this is where we start to really sort of uncork the party poppers. The relays are, are great fun at the end of a meet, yep. and the end of tonight we've got the 200 medley relays first for the women then for the men love for union are in them which is nice to see they aren't always and naturally they can build a pretty strong team but in the heats this morning it was pretty close so we're hoping to see some pretty good races yeah i mean we'll be interested to see if they've made any switches with the uh, teammates as well which you can do from heats to the finals we'll have a look we'll see great a, a great event to be part of the team i mean i've always talked about swimming being a solo event but it's great to be part of the team it's great to be there behind the blocks with your teammates you know you sit at the end high-fiving and hugging and it's it, it uh, for me it really lifts the atmosphere as well you know with, with the crowd with the with, with the swimmers on pool side everyone kind of stands up and takes notice of a of a, of a, of a really good relay race and it kind of elevates that that atmosphere and I know you didn't do a huge amount of relay swimming in your time, but how much did you enjoy it when you did get the chance? To? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, I did lots with Stockport, obviously, with my with my home club. Um, not so much with GB, um, but it was great fun. I mean, it was a lot. Of, it was, it's, it's just great to be behind. You can see the, the four women there together, you know, who's gone first, second, third. And, you know, and, and quite a lot of the time I touched first or second, and, you know, about that. but it's a great moment to come together and, and, and be part of the team. Yeah, we've seen some fantastic relays on the international scene this year. We're certainly hoping to see plenty more here in the water in ponds tonight. Mount Kelly lead the way in lane four, and we can hand you back over to our race commentator for the final couple of races of the night. It's Jonathan. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, this really is an exciting one ahead. Always love a good relay, and with this event as well, it's just the one final. There's no warm up with a B. We are straight into the fastest 10 from this morning. Uh, Mount Kelly are that team, led out by Athena Clayson on the first leg. A time for them earlier of 152.83. That's half a second quicker than now at Loughborough University. But I mean, it's your first real uh, look at the lineup here for Loughborough. Emily Crane, Imogen Clark, Murray Wattle, and Emily Barkley. It's a formidable side that any team will have had to have done well to beat. Yeah, Emily Crane going out 27.09 on that backstroke. You see, she's built up body length, maybe two body length lead for the breaststrokes from her. You can, you can just hear the atmosphere straight away. As soon as the referee blew the whistle, you could hear cheers from all over the poolside. Um, that's what these relays do, you know? They kind of they bring people together, they make people excited, and it's, it's that team atmosphere, it's that team event, um, and that's why it raises that atmosphere on the poolside. Halfway point, and it's been very strong so far from Luff University. Imogen Clark passing the baton over now to Mary Wattle. And uh, I mean, this is a, a real buffer that you want to boast when you get into the pool. Your teammates have done the hard work for you, and now you're on your, your strongest stroke and you're able to plough on and maybe bring this one home. It's going to be difficult for anyone here on the final 50 to catch Luffy University as Emily Barkley now goes in the pool. Yeah, it's nice to be the freestyle at the end there. Just, you know, she can swim it how she wants. I'm sure she'll swim hard. I'm sure, she, I'm sure she'll swim uh, as, as fast as she can to post as quick a time as you can here, but you know, you could, you could, you could put, a, uh, put a reason out there for her to cruise home, but she's not, she's smashing it all the way in there. Need Robinson. Look for then on 146.77, second spot Mount Kelly, third Plymouth Leander, that was really close that, wasn't it, between Plymouth, Hamilton and City of Norwich coming in towards the end, but Loughborough doing what we expected, coming to the fore in the evening, uh, winning quite com handsomely and comfortably.
the penultimate race of the night and uh, the job now the umpires to uh, just get the backstroke ledgers back in play for uh, the men's race and again it's uh, a real lineup where you can feast your eyes upon Loughborough once more favourites Luke Greenbank, James Wilby, Brian O'Sullivan and Tom Fannon they've been busy in the pool tonight and their closest rivals we expect to be Plymouth Leander but uh, once again it's the side from the East Midlands that really should be winning this I mean, the only way Loughborough are going to use it, lose this is if they get disqualified. This is the only way. I mean, look at that field. I mean, what we've got Luke Green, Bank, James Wilby. <laughs> Who have we got there? Brian O'Sullivan. Brian and Tom O'Sullivan on Tom Fannin. Oh, well, I mean, come on. I mean, the only way they're going to get beat is if they get disqualified. It's uh, It should be a formality. James, uh, very confident there with his crystal ball in hand. But we'll wait and find out. Still some swimming to be done in the next couple of minutes as the teams are introduced now and again I mean we, we emphasize this at these swimming the meet for it be the summer especially though the winter you've got the likes of the, the Loughborough swimmers that they'll be putting on show here and some of the swimmers around them in other teams what an opportunity for them yeah it's, it is a great opportunity it's not, it's, any chance you get as a junior or as a youngster to swim up against some of the you know some of the big guns in not just Britain but in the world take it go for it you know, don't be scared, don't be intimidated, just go for it, just do your best, trust in your training, and have a good time, you know, I mean, this is, you know, this is what it's about, I know, I may be being a bit intense sometimes, but it's just about having a good time, you know, take the opportunity just to have a, have a, put a, with a smile on your face, have a great time. From the end, uh, look like uh, a decent side as well, as it, I'm just trying to uh, shove off uh, the Mount Kelly swimmer for <laughs> the, uh, off of the blocks, pulling the jest I'm sure, but uh, Cliffs and they're making sure that they fair lay completely to themselves. Yeah, it'd be nice if Plymouth could uh, challenge Loughborough here and put a race on. Plymouth well known for their sprinters. The final race of the night then, and uh, let's hope it's a blockbuster of a blowout. The men's 200 metre medley team event final. And off we go, and uh, keen eye on lane four here to see the start that Luke Greenbank gets. You feel, James, that you look around at the rest of the pool, they'll be conscious completely of Loughborough, and they're just going to think, we've got to go for this. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you've, got, you've got absolutely nothing to lose. You may as well go for it. You may as well try and challenge these guys, you know, and just because they're Commonwealth gold medalists and European medalists and European record holders and all that sort of stuff doesn't mean you can't challenge them. If anything, you want to beat those guys more, right? So why not challenge it? Mark start from Bangor, Jordan Sloan passing over now to uh, Jack McMillan. I don't think they were first on the changeover, but they were certainly close there to Loughborough University. We now have James Wilby in the pool, and you feel that it'll be a uh, different destination for the pendulum once it comes to the wall now. will be strong as ever, and now passing over to uh, Brian O'Sullivan to wave the Loughborough flag and dropping down now a banger and starting to try and vacate that spot in second instead in lane five. We have Plymouth Leander for the first time knocking on the door. Eduardo Valsecchi in the pool for them. Yeah, just watching the takeovers as well. Some slick, slick takeovers. You know, when you do the takeover, you want to start moving before the swimmer gets to the wall, not when they touch it. That was a little bit of a slow one, actually, from Loughborough. Tom Fannin, a little bit of a slower takeover there, really. But you want to start moving before the swimmer touches the wall because in theory, if your toe is still on the block when the swimmer has touched the wall, you are safe. You are safe. 
see a lot of the juniors nowadays, they don't move until the swimmer touches the wall, it's too late by then. Well, Tom Fallon's arms are zipping through the water and he comfortably strolls for 136.91. That's the time of the team and it's the time that takes Loughborough to top of the podium. Banger are in second then. They'll get a commemorative medal for that, the Irish side. 138.75. Plymouth Leander, the second fastest out of the English clubs, joined up there by East Leeds. They will get a bronze medal as we round off the action for the evening then. And it's Loughborough University with... The double in the women's and the men's 4x50 medley team events. Um, what an evening we have had here in Ponds Forge on the BBC Sport website and the red button as well. Finishing this one off, Loughborough University winning the men's medley team event. Thank you very much, Jonathan, and welcome back to the studio here in Sheffield, here in Ponds Forge. Myself, Steve Jameson, too. James Goddard rather next to me and James we've seen some fantastic swims tonight crowned off by those relays we thought Loughborough might change things up yep. we didn't think they'd send the all-stars out did we in the, in the men's the big, relay the big that cannons was, out didn't they yeah that was a really I know, sneaky squad. sneaky I know it kind of it, I guess for the other teams it must be a little bit debilitating scene but then on the same token you know it's it's kind of like cool I mean I get to race James, James Willoughby and I get to race Tom Fannin and you know, Let's try and beat them, you know. I mean, let's try and let's try and do this. Um, yeah, no, strong from Loughborough. You know, we know they've got a great team down there, um, especially in the, in the, in the uh, senior ranks. So, uh, expected those guys to win. Yeah, and win they did indeed. Medal ceremonies are on their way for you. The last few of the day, we've still got to present the medals for the 200 fly, the 400 free, the 100 free, the 100 IM, and our medley relays as well and as we just start to almost reflect on what's been a really interesting night actually is there of swimming just talk to us first off james but overall the night tonight has been very very good we've seen yeah. we thought we thought we were in for this when we saw the morning session we yeah. saw how, how serious everyone was taking it it seemed to be race pace right from the get-go yeah it really has lived up to that we've seen some very good swims generally speaking mm -hmm. yeah everyone. yeah i mean I, I, I was really surprised coming to this competition you know knowing that i was going to come and do this work with you guys i thought there'll be a lot of tactics and game playing with some of the senior swimmers you know they'll kind of cruise into the final or, you know they'll hit the front end and then really ease off on the back end but i'm not really seeing much of that at all you know they've been hitting it hard hitting it strong you know so with with guys going really close or even beating their personal best times um, and in the finals we've seen that as well and it's, it's been like that all day hopefully it'll continue for the rest of the next two days as well because it's uh, fast swimming yeah we really hope so it's been a fantastic standard set and moving through the individuals we'll just give you a bit of a run through of what we've seen tonight in case you've missed anything and also to to put some more respect on the names of, of some swimmers who've really done some fantastic things tonight we start off with that women's 800 meter freestyle and Holly Hibbert, a time of 8.19.87, a time that I know you particularly were very, very impressed with. She had a brilliant year this year, Holly. Had the fourth in the 800 at the European Championships, which I know will have stung, but nice to end it on a high. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a season best is, is always great. I mean, 8.9, she went 8.22 a couple months ago, or last month rather, so she dropped three seconds in a month. Um, I know she'll be pleased with that. Yeah, I mean, you could see the reaction from a coach on pool side. I always kind of keep an eye on it. And uh, well, you happy. were saying to me earlier off air that actually her coach is the same as your coach from, yeah. from back in the day. And you still recognise the whistles and the individual yeah. shouts in a crowd of thousands. You still know exactly yeah, who he is. Yeah, if there was a million people in here and he did his whistle or his go little thing that he likes to do, then I would be like, it'd be like, where's Wally? Be like, there's Sean, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Can you whistle? There's his whistle right there. And he'd be waving at me like, hey. And he, um, he must have been pretty happy with that performance, you'd imagine. Yeah, he was, yeah, yeah. I mean, he would be happy with that. Um, I mean, and it's not an event that she focuses on that much now. She focuses, she's zooming in more on that 400 metre now. That's where I think she thinks she can pick up a medal next next year in Tokyo and uh, hope, uh, sorry, next year at Wills. And in Tokyo in two years, that's where her focus is going to be to try and pick up that medal. Yeah. You know, just keep a GB presence in the 400 freestyle, wouldn't you? Oh, this is a brilliant yeah. performance of Jazz Carlin yeah. in 2016. Medals now being presented. As we mentioned, we've moved on to the uh, Women's 200 Butterfly presentations. This was an event that was won by Laura Stevens, and didn't she look absolutely brilliant in the process as well? Yeah. And, Quick uh, time as well. Yeah, one thing you always get from Laura, even if she's only just won a race, hasn't particularly shown that well, she's always just happy to win. She yeah. loves winning. 
And you always she see had a, a big massive smile. smile on her face. Yeah, it was great to see. I think she's got 204, which is the best time, and it's it's quick. I mean, it's, it's really if she can transfer that to long course now, she's really going to be in the mix. And we talked about breakthrough swims earlier. I mean, that's that's a really big drop off for her, and it's, it could be the swim that she needs to kind of propel her onto them senior ranks on a long long course stage as well. Um, so it's going to be exciting times for this young lady. Best smile, big smile on her face. You know, she said, "Good morning, good afternoon, good evening." Had all three. Had all three. She's had all three. She's had a good day, should we say. Great day. <laughs> Absolutely. Great. Laura Stevens, very, very pleased there. Two of the under girls on the podium as well in the uh, in the junior event, the medal going the way of Plymouth Leander also. And, and we talked a little bit about Plymouth Leander making fantastic sprinters, and then you had to sort of say, oh, well, we've got Laura Stevens here as well. In, in the junior medal, they seem to be all rounding as a as a club now. We talked we talked to Roberto Pavoni last year who was who's part of the Plymouth Leander setup now and I know someone you know pretty well as well in Roberto and they seem to be building something pretty special down in the south coast. Yeah for sure. Um, we know about their history of amazing sprinters, you know, Olympic gold medals have, have come from Plymouth. Um, and now they've got these 200 meter fly swimmers, which is great as well. So I mean they're doing something right. They've got a great setup down there, obviously got great coaches and great programme. Um, awesome pool, you know, right on the university there. So, you know, if you want to study and train at the same time, it's really, really easy, which is not easy in a lot of places, you know. In, in my town of Manchester, it's a bit trickier, you know. At Loughborough and Bath and Plymouth, it's a bit easier, you know. So, um, they've got a great setup and they're producing some fantastic swimmers. Yeah, they certainly are. And uh, the medals are coming up next for the uh, men's 400 freestyle. This is an event that was dominated by one Max Litchfield. And what an amazing performance it was as well. Not traditionally a freestyle swimmer. He is he is a medley swimmer by trade and a very, very, very good one as well. Medals on the international stage. Swimming the freestyle, he's never really swum it, as far as I can tell. Really swimming it that, that competitively on, on a national stage even, but he looked so impressive. Yeah, 338 for Max, which is quick. I mean, it's a couple quick. of seconds off James Guy's uh, European record. I mean, this is it. This is why it's so quick. I mean, it's, this is what I mean, James Guy, when he did that, was in his prime for 400 freestyle, you know, that was that was his event. Um, so for Max to go that quick is, is is superb. And you could see just, he swam it exactly the same as he did in the heats. Obviously a bit quicker, but he went out for it. He went out fast, he went out strong, and he, he just wanted to dominate the race. And that's the way Max likes to swim. He likes to go out hard from the front, and he's not going to let anybody else past him or even near him as it turned out in this point of freestyle. Yeah, he loves swimming in this pool. He used to swim here for the city of Sheffield. He's since moved away like his, like his brother Joe. But and it, it must, it's always a bit of a special feeling swimming in your home pool, especially being successful in your home pool. I know that's something you've had to a very extreme example back in 2002, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, Manchester's not my home pool technically. I mean, it's I mean, it's only 15 minutes. I know. I mean, to me, <laughs> it's close. Well, it's, 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 yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a stone's throw. But it's um, for me personally, I like to go into different pools. I'd, I mean, I would rather race in a different pool than my home pool because I've swam there a million times. It's kind of like a bit bo it's almost boring. Almost. It's more about I, the experience for you rather than the familiarity. Yeah, I got more of a buzz going to different pools to race rather than the same old pool. It, I don't know. I got that kind of. It was a bit more of a different kind of buzz for me. It was more of an adrenaline rush to turn up to. A, to a different pool and race different pe different people. That was more of a buzz for me. Yeah, it's interesting to hear, actually. But again, we've said it all the way through today. Horses for courses. You know, Max Litchfield. I know from speaking to him before. Just loves being in Sheffield. He absolutely loves this city. Loves this pool, and uh, he's going to claim a gold medal here as well. And uh, it seems the swimmers are all enjoying the flames on the uh, on the pool side as well. Something a bit extra this year. Yeah. yeah, well, it kind of represents the swimming so far. It's been on fire. Hey. It has. It's been, it's been great. It's been, it really has. Uh, yeah, I know. And it, I'm, I'm really hoping it carries on the next two days. I mean, the, I mean, the only slight disappointment, obviously, was Siobhan today. But I mean, she's. I mean, I don't want to keep harping on about Siobhan because, because she, she knows she knows that she's made a couple of mistakes today and she's not had the best the best racing. Um, but she's a tough cookie, and we'll see Siobhan bounce back. Um, I know Siobhan. Uh, she's a tough trainer, tough racer. And she, uh, She'll bounce back. Technically very gifted too as well. You know, she's sort of easy to forget. She's one of the best in the world. Yeah, yeah, Not sure. just one of the best in Britain, one of the best in the world. Yeah, I mean, the positive that we can take from it is that people that are watching and the people that watch on the side, even it happens to the best. So, you know, when you get disqualified, which it happens to us all, it's happened to me a few times, you know, don't get too downhearted about it. You know, it's learn from it and, you know, and, and, and move on, you know, you've got to move on. We've seen the medals being presented to Max Litchfield and seen there on the 
left hand side of his shot such a gifted swimmer 400 medley far more his speciality and uh, yeah, I mean you've got to have everything to be a 400 medley swimmer you've not only got it's to tough. have every stroke but you've got to have a bit of endurance about you as well yeah it's arguably the most uh, it's arguably the, 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 the toughest event in the programme I mean it's, it's painful painful um, and it takes a lot of weight. there's no shortcuts in a 400 free that's the thing I mean there's not there's no shortcuts in any event nowadays I mean you, I mean, if you go back 15, 20 years, you could in a 200 IM you could maybe have a shortcut of having a slightly weaker stroke. But in a 400 IM nowadays, you can't have a weak stroke. It's and, and, and you, there's just no shortcuts. You have to work hard. You have to put the effort in in the in, in the training, in the gym, and all that sort of stuff. It's uh, he's, tough. Stuff, um, he's clearly putting effort into his freestyle swimming. The yeah. 400 at, at this event is yeah. is some effort. He, it looks on point. We're about to see the medal for the women's 100 meter freestyle. This is the event that we saw uh, Siobhan unfortunately pull out of uh, for medical reasons. So. The winner of the event was Kayla Sanchez, another one of our Canadian guests. And talk to me a little bit about this swimmer, James, because she looks to have it all at such a young age. She is looking terrifyingly good. Yeah, young swimmer, um, hungry, happy. Yeah, and it's a really important point, actually. We haven't seen her stop smiling all, yeah, all evening. Yeah, well, I mean, when you're swimming fast and you're swimming well, and you, and you know, you kind of know coming into the competition. I'm sure when she was doing a warm up as well, she was like, "Oh, I feel, you know, I feel pretty good, right?" You know. So when she walked out behind the blocks, behind those, the heats and the fans, you could see that big smile on her face. That she had that kind of air of confidence around her. You kind of knew that she was going to do something. Well, she knew that she was going to do something very, very special. Um, and she's been a force to be reckoned with today. Um, she's gonna have a lot more events coming up over the next two days, and it's gonna be great to watch her. She's young, she's hungry, she's passionate um, about swimming, obviously, and she just looks like she loves it as well, which is great to see. Yeah, it really is. That's certainly a name to look out for on the, uh, on the international scene in the next, well, next however many years she likes. She's, she's almost she's pretty much there, yeah, she's pretty much there. Absolutely incredible from Kerr Sanchez. But from the British and English perspectives, Anna Hopkin wasn't too far back. Anna's been a, a great sprinter on the national scene and internationally now for a little while and always a very, very dangerous competitor, which is almost why we have to look at Kayla Sanchez and go, that's how good she is. Yeah, yeah. and you know, hopefully the British girls can draw some inspiration off Kayla and think, you know what, I've, she's there, I've got to move up as well, and I've got to maybe change some things, and there's Kayla, and Kayla there, she's not bigger than anybody else, you know, she's not, you know, she's not, she's not like six foot four or anything like that, she's just the same height as everybody else. And it's worth, it's worth pointing out, actually, she's not some sort of unbelievable physical freak that you sort of see her and see, oh, that's exactly why she's so she's quite unassuming, relatively small in stature, just looks like your average sort of 17-year-old, really, but she's got a really special talent. Yeah, you can see, I'm just, I'm just looking at her reactions behind the blocks and the way, look at her, she's just smiling and laughing and talking and having a good time, and she just seems very chilled. Um, maybe that's her personality, obviously, I don't know, but she seems very very comfortable right now, very confident young uh, lady. Julia gold medal there for Betsy Wizard, down in Northampton. And Anna Hopkin there, claiming the English gold medal and the national title. I think it's just comparing to see if it's the same as Kayla's, but I think it is. It's gold, right? <laughs> same colour. <laughs> it's gold. <laughs> Trophy is now being presented to the two English girls as well. Yeah, the swim in the middle is certainly one to look out for in, uh, in future years. Our next race was, I know, one you were massively looking forward to, James. When you saw it on the schedule, this one that immediately jumped out at you. You know, you see that 100 meter IM, you know that, that was your event back in the day, you used to absolutely love it. And obviously, being a short course, we don't see too many short course events nowadays in this country. It, it sort of jumped out at you immediately. Did, did the event itself live up to your expectations? Uh, did you enjoy watching it? Again? I did enjoy watching it. I thought Sam Horrocks swam really well. Um, it's one of the, in one of the outside lanes, um, and we all expected Joe Litchfield to win it. Um, and ha Sam went out really quick. You know, bombed that fly, which is he's a fly swimmer, so it, it was to be expected. Hit that backstroke really hard as well and went 54, took it down. Uh, no, sorry, we went 53-5, didn't he? Uh, and took it down. Really impressed with Sam, actually. Um, and it was a pretty quick time. So, yeah, no, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching it. It's a really fun event, actually, because we don't get to swim it that often. And you can sprint those four strokes. You know, you can just let loose on four strokes. And uh, Sam, you know, had a great swim today.
Yeah, he certainly did. The guys are making their way onto the podium at the minute. So Lewis Hayes picking up a junior bronze medal. Getting a pretty big cheer as well from his teammates. I just heard a big roar behind us somewhere, so that's good to hear. It's always nice, isn't it, when you've got a decent flock of teammates up in the crowd giving you a big cheer. Yeah, for sure, yeah. It means a lot. It does mean a lot. I mean, when you go, you know, when you're training with your teammates, you sometimes see them more than your actual parents, you know, because you're at the pool, say, for two and a half hours in the morning, then two and a half hours in the evening, plus some gym work. It's like six hours a day, you know, some days. So you see them more than your actual parents. There's Joe Litchfield picking up his uh, silver medal. Jason Robson getting the junior golds. Sam Horrocks waiting patiently in the wings. Didn't he do well to win that difficult in outside lane, especially in a sprint event like that when it's a little bit open. You've got a lot of ways to battle with out there as well, never mind anything else. Yeah, I think he was maybe saving a little bit from this morning. He's, a couple of months ago, we set the British leading time uh, in Manchester. Um, so I think this morning he might have been holding a little bit back and saving it, but I mean, that's just part of it, you know, he was saving a little bit and hit that final and took it down. Well, didn't he just? And uh, our final medals are going to be for the relays and oh, we just enjoyed these. Weren't, weren't Loughborough brilliant on both? I mean, it's, it, it's, we won't just focus on them because there's some brilliant swims elsewhere, but they did win the race and they were just terrific. Yeah, they brought out the big guns, didn't they? They brought out the big cannons like the James Wilbys and the Tom Fannons and the Luke Greenbanks of the world, you know, the Emily Clarks. You know, they, all, they got all the big guns out. I think at uh, one point the, the girls team had at least two gold medalists from tonight yeah. just swimming in the relay at the end, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yes, yeah, so they brought all the big guns out. I mean, that's what you can do with, with a team like Loughborough, you know, with the strength and depth that they've got, they can, they can mix it up and change it up in there. They smashed it tonight, which was kind of to be expected, I guess. Um, but Plymouth they always have a strong squad as well, they've done well. It's a good young team at Plymouth Leander as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point actually, yeah, very good point. It's good to see the youngsters up there. Promising for the future, they'll be looking maybe at 2024. Well, we were talking a little bit about Mount Kerry this morning, but for the benefit of those listening now, we were really impressed with how many swimmers Mount Kenny were putting in, in finals and putting in wins late earlier on in the heats. Yep. You were talking yep. in there in glowing terms. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a thing to hear of that much and they're just starting to make some waves, so to speak. It's it's good to see, it's good to see. You know, I mean, I, I don't always like hearing the Loughboroughs and even the Stockports and the Bats and all that, so it's nice to hear a club that's maybe a little bit smaller, that doesn't have the kind of the the, the history or the pedigree that some of these, these bigger clubs have, and it's, it's nice to see when they produce some good quality swimmers, you know, and win medals. It's nice to see. And on the back go the flames up in the sky for Loughborough University. A great relay swim from the girls in that one, and our final medal certainly will be for the men. Really, really top performance, wasn't it? Yeah. They were, to be fair to them, they were pushed a little bit closer than maybe I thought when I saw the lineup that they put out. When I saw those four, I thought it could be a, a bit of a massacre yeah. in the pool, but actually they were, they were pushed reasonably close. Yeah, they were. James Wilby had a good breaststroke leg. I noticed he, he really pulled away from the rest of the field, um, which I guess is to be expected. But he, no, He'll he had, do that. <laughs> yeah, and they, I mean, they had, they had pretty good takeovers as well. You could see the difference. In, I, was, I like to look at the technical stuff in the pool, and you could notice the takeovers from the Loughborough guys were a lot cleaner, a lot quicker than some of the outside ones. They'd obviously, because you can move, when it comes to a relay takeover, you can move a little bit early. You don't as long as you've got one toe on the block and your teammate that's in the wall is touching the wall, you are good, you are safe, okay? Which is why we see so many, when I mean, you think back to the amazing GB relays that we've seen just this year, for example, it's why we always see you know, the likes of Duncan Scott and Adam Peasy. Once they do a relay, so when you look at their individual splits, it's an absolute joke how fast those two in particular oh, yeah, can go because exactly they get that little advantage at the start. For sure. Yeah, most of the top guys and girls are maybe on a normal start, a 0.6 of a second off the block, maybe 0.5 at the top end. But if they do a really quick relay take of it, 0.1 of a second, or even 0.05 of a second, so they're saving half a second right there. So that's why a lot of the time the relay take is, um, the times are quicker for that 100. Well, it's, uh, it's a great swim from uh, the Irish guys there from Bangor. Across the Irish Sea they've come and they've got themselves a medal, which is lovely to see. Silver in the, uh, in the relay. Good on you, lads.
Oh, the commemorative silver, of course, international team. So oh, course, Plymouth yeah. now have to make their way onto the slightly smaller foot than eight-man podium. Yeah. They will eventually, I think, try and squeeze them all on one for a, for a big group photo, but all, all the best to the, to the staff yeah, down they'll there. they'll get on there. They'll find a way. Loughborough were terrific. It's a very, very good team, very fast team. And, uh, I don't think we've seen too much of Brian O'Sullivan tonight, but the other three have all swam in races and looked very, very good as well. Tom Fannin, Wilby and Greenbelt, we've all seen on the podium tonight. Yeah. They're looking in pretty good nick. Yeah, they are. Look at how happy they are. I mean, look, I mean, look, at, Jay, look at James Wilby and Luke Greenbank, Tom Fannin. They're all smiling from here to here. I mean, these guys, you know, compete at the top, top level and they, you know, and they smile. I mean, they, I mean, they've won this comfortably, but this is what it means. I mean, this is what it means. This one is the, even at these competitions where, you know, they can win by however much, it still means, you know, they're still chuffed, they're still sort of happy to win those gold medals. They are indeed. And, and that's what we love to see as well, because it, it, it's it's never nice when you when you sort of get the sense that someone feels a little bit too big time for, for a smaller yeah. event like this. And it's lovely to see that these international swimmers come back and really love being here. Yeah, 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 sure. And they love winning. I mean, that's, I mean, that's what yeah. I mean, they love winning. So to be on the centre, if you, I guarantee if those Loughborough guys were on the, the silver medal, in silver medal, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be smiling like that. No. They would not be smiling like that. You'd be unhappy. Yeah, so, naturally. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, of course, course yeah. yeah. It's been a brilliant day, uh, ladies and gents. We hope you've enjoyed it, that's for sure, of swimming. And we've still got two more days of this to come. Yeah. It's, it's so, so exciting. We'll be back tomorrow and back on Sunday as well. Same time, same place here on BBC Sport, on the app, online and on the red button as well. We hope you've enjoyed it. We hope to see you again tomorrow and indeed on Sunday with myself and from James here and from all the team at Ponsford. We wish you a very good evening.